Last Friday night, we built it as a winner-take-all, a region championship game down on the Creek Bank at Ohatchee, and the Indians held serve at home and won that one. Well, we've got our second straight region championship game for you coming up tonight as the Hoax Bluff Eagles play host to the Jacksonville Golden Eagles, number two and number three of the state, as you saw on the screen, and the winner tonight will be the Region 6 champion here in Class 4A. Hello, everyone. I'm Grady Sapp alongside the coach, Eddie Bullock, here alongside me as we get set for our uh, second region title game in a row, Coach. Uh, this is how you like to kind of come down the stretch here with some games that really matter. Absolutely. The weather's uh, nice and cool and uh, it's a little misty and wet outside, but that's still good football weather, but that's what you look forward to. And you get two undefeated teams who really uh, kind of want to do the same thing. Both really like to run the football, so it should be a fantastic matchup here tonight. Right, and you got two great teams, uh, two well-coached teams and uh, two good programs, and uh, I think we're in for a great night of football tonight. I think we are as well. Looking forward to that. And, of course, uh, last Friday night, as we mentioned, we had a fantastic game down on the Creek Bank where the uh, Ohanchi Indians, I think, won their first ever region title. And as we get ready to head to our first break of the night, we will uh, take a look back at that one from last Friday night. And then we'll come back and uh, take a look at our big ones coming up here on the Friday Night Network. It is the Professional Apothecary Durable Medical Equipment Countdown to Kickoff here on the Friday Night Network. Here's Austin going to feel some pressure, going to scramble out. Has time, fires it across the middle, intercepted. intercepted. Handed off to Thomas, looking for running room. Finds a little bit, pops it to the outside. Here goes Dominique Thomas, and he'll have his first down and more. Out formation, fake it to that Thomas, is. and here he goes over the middle. Got a man wide open. That's caught, and that is six. Touchdown. And Randall will go for it on fourth down and goal. Lawson over the head, picks it up. He's got to roll back out to his right. Got pressure, and he's down. Maybe someone blitz. They're going to fake the end around, and Ross is going to roll out. Got pressure coming backside. He's down. <laughs> pressure from Ohatchee. Picks it over here near us. And that's going to be in the stands. Going to drop back and keeps it. And he's kicked from behind. Good field position. Dominic Thomas says, not this time. We're going to get something out of this one. Here goes Thomas. And he's going to be wrestled down. Breaks the tackle. And he plays on his feet. Thomas in the end zone. Yeah, the Smith not going to pull it out now. Dancing around, Rossman gets away, fires it out the flat, and that ball is caught. What a catch. Bull Ross take it, Rossman keeps it, coming to the right side. Trying to get around the corner, Thomas says, no sir, you're not going to make it. Hand it off to Thomas again, running to the right side. Thomas has got a move, makes a man miss, and he's got another first down, and again. Fires it down the man, got a man, caught! And it running the other way, Cam McCombs breaks free. McCombs, he's got a day. Touchdown, Ohachi. Ball on the ground, Auburn picks it up, goes straight up the middle, gonna have his first down and a lot more. Jason Auburn is in the clear. He's in there at the feet, and he's in. Touchdown, Ohachi. Coach Chris from Professional Pop Carry, and we're your hometown team. We take care of all your pharmacy and medical equipment needs. When it comes to medical supplies, the team at Professional Apothecary has the winning game plan. Everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and doctor comfort shoes. And we have all of your over-the-counter needs. Come see us at Professional Apothecary. Located on North Street, just off the square, on Facebook and online at ProAPO.com. Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most out of your Wi-Fi with the best whole home streaming and surfing on all your devices. That's 100 megs, $55 a month, plus free installation. Now get high speeds like this at an incredible everyday low price. Get in now at 855-CABLE-1. Etowah County Circuit Court Judge David Kimberly has presided over more than 7,000 criminal cases, including three to death and others to spend their lives in prison. Judge Kimberly is committed to protecting Etowah County from dangerous killers. On November 6, re-elect Judge David Kimberly because experience matters. What's behind the CA? A world full of opportunities. Where are you now? Where are you going? Where do you want to be? These are all important in determining your path in life. More importantly, why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? At Central Alabama Community College, you can be anything you wish to be. 
Don't put your future on hold and don't settle for less than excellence. We are Central Alabama Community College. Central to you. Central to your success. Town & Country already has Alabama's newest Ford store in Pell City. Soon we'll have Alabama's two newest. This will soon be this. Town & Country Ford's construction reduction sale is on. We're making room for construction with price reductions. Find the year's lowest prices on over 800 vehicles. F-150s are up to $14,000 off or zero interest for 72 months. Construction reduction offers good at Bessemer and Pell City. Town & Country Ford. Welcome back to the Professional Apothecary Durable to Medical Equipment. Countdown to kickoff here from Mike Robertson Stadium in Hoax Bluff. Grady Sapp alongside Coach Eddie Bullock here in the booth. And uh, down in our production trailer, Jim Jacobs gets ready to join us now as we get set to take a look at our big ones from around uh, the area for tonight. And there are some big ones going on with a lot of meaning for a, a lot of teams coming up tonight. So let's take a look. First off, Ranburn at Realtown. And, of course, this one, not really a, a counter for Ranburn, but they're going to be looking to try and bounce back after getting handled pretty well out there on the Creek Bank last Friday night, guys. It could have been a different game in the first half, but in the second half, Ohechi really kind of took it to Ranburn. Right, and I think that uh, part of the reason was, you know, Ranburn had two opportunities in the red zone, and a lot of times when you don't take advantage of that, the momentum can change. And, uh, you know, Ohechi has a great team, so, you know, they did what they needed to do. I think Rambert uh, handled this one pretty easy. Ooh, well, I don't know, Coach. I, I'm kind of leaning the Rebels are 8-1, and one, and I think their only loss was maybe to Lynette earlier in the season. And, uh, uh, Jim, that's a pretty tough team to beat down there in Realtown. I was going to say, I think Coach Eddie's been in the nachos too early. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I, I like Realtown in this one, but i got to tell you, I think this is an important game for Ranburn headed, yeah, in, headed into the playoffs. Of course, they got White Plains next week at home to finish, to finish out the regular season. But, you know, Coach, you you got to want to get some some mo after what happened at Ohatchee last week, don't you? Absolutely, and I guarantee you, those guys looked at that fam and saw where they may have missed a couple of opportunities. And uh, you know, even though it's not a counter, I think they're going to be pretty hungry. All right, the next one, Elmore County, is at Lincoln. Well, the region title can be uh, settled at uh, tonight. And uh, of course, how about a team that went one and nine last year in the Golden Bears? Uh, Coach Matt Zedeker has got them turned around and uh, a chance to play in the region tonight if they get a win against Elmore County, which they sh would be favored to do. Absolutely. I think uh, Lincoln uh, you know, has done the thing that they need to do the last two weeks, so I, I think they'll take care of business at home. But. Yeah, I, I kind of like the Golden Bears tonight, but guys, this region has absolute chaos. Uh, if, I can, if I can make this do what I want it to do, I'm going to show you something here uh, that uh, – you're going to want to see because this is interesting. 4A Region 4, there's four scenarios here. Take a look at this, Grady. Oh, good grief. All right, so you've got 4A Region 4. Wow. So it could go all these different seeds depending on what happens. Yep. Lincoln's kind of the domino. Link, if Lincoln loses tonight and Hanley beats Talladega, Hanley would win the region and Lincoln would drop to third and have to travel in the first week. So, Coach, I, I, I know if, if you're in that locker room, I know what you're telling them. Boys, we need to take care of business. Absolutely. You, you, you know, as long as you can control your own destiny, you feel a little, little bit better about it. You know, most coaches don't like for things to have to happen when you're out front. Well, I picked against the Golden Bears last week. I'm not going to this week. I think they make it easier on all of us so that we don't have to think, and they win it tonight and just claim the claim the region title. Yeah, I, I like I like Lincoln in this one as well, Grady. I really do. Big game as Boaz will make the trip down to Etowah this week, and uh, of course the the Pirates got upset last week by Southside, and uh, that. They maybe took a little bit off of this meeting tonight, but Etowah's had a good year so far, and Boaz would certainly love to uh, go in and spoil the spoil the perfect season for the Blue Devils. Well, you know, Boaz, uh, probably that's the thinking that they have, but, you know, I think Etowah at home, Etowah has too good of a team. I, I think they'll do what they need to do to take care of business at home. Coach, most people are, are already penciling Etowah in out of the north. I don't, I don't know if that's realistic or not because, obviously, we haven't seen them, but... Uh, the word, the buzz is that they're a pretty good football team. And, you know, the, the shine kind of came off of this one last week after Boaz got upset by Southside. So 
I like Etowah tonight uh, with, without a lot of trouble. You give up 51 points in nine games, I like your chances to win them all. So I like that. Of course, Clay Central went over to center point last night, and uh, they got the win 14 to nothing. And by the way, I picked the Volunteers on Tuesday night because I always pick them. Yes, you did. And uh, they went over and shut down center point. So I think that puts them second place in the region. So they'll host in the first round. That was a big win for the Volunteers last night. Yeah, and, and that, like you said, Grady, that locks them into second place. And, you know, Coach, we've talked about this many times. Boy, you want to play at home in that first round if you can. That's the best feeling that you ever want to have is being at home, you know, either, you know that first round. because uh, And then depending on how it is, you know, I know in the past I, I've looked up and got two home games, you know, by winning the first one, at, you know, at home. So it, it makes a great deal of difference. Well, this the next one, Hanley at Talladega. It's a lot of implications in the region, but, boy, both teams are coming limping into this one. Talladega losing three of their last four, and Hanley at uh, two uh, and three in their last five. So neither team exactly has a lot of momentum. No, I don't think so. And this, it, this may be a coin toss here because uh, both teams are capable of beating each other. You know, I kind of lean with Talladega being at home. I don't know the injury reports or anything like that, but, you know, if, if all is well, I, I kind of lean toward Talladega at home. Yeah, based on what we saw with uh, Hanley a couple of weeks ago at Lincoln, I kind of like Talladega at home because they've never hosted a playoff game, and if they can get the win, they guarantee themselves a second-place finish in the region at worst and uh, get to host a playoff game. That's a lot of motivation, Jim. Yeah, no doubt about it, Grady. I, I mean, if, if, if I think Talladega's got more to play for, honestly. Uh, but they just haven't played well lately. I don't, I don't know what's happened, uh, but they just haven't played well lately. Neither one would surprise me tonight. I'm kind of like Coach Eddie. I think this is a coin flip, but I'll give the edge to the Tigers because they're playing at home, and that's Talladega. Yep, absolutely. So we continue our look at the big ones, and um, maybe this is the biggest of all in regards to what's at stake tonight. Yeah. Who, who would have thunk this yeah, one? Yeah, Silicaga's <laughs> at Munford. And basically, it's win and you're in, and fourth place, lose and you're done. Well, again, I, I think this is going to be a coin toss right here. You know, Moffitt is playing a lot better than they did early in the season. And, you know, even though they won the game last week, you know, they just made, took advantage of some opportunities. Uh, I still think Silicaga has enough to offensively and defensively to come in and maybe steal a game, you know. But if Moffitt is playing well, you know, I think Moffitt uh, – handle business at home, you know, because they got a lot to play for also. I, I you know, I, the, the paper says Silicaga, but my head just keeps pulling me toward Munford, and I don't know why. Uh, I like I like the lines tonight. I'm going to give them the edge. And, you know, Coach, the one thing that I think might make the big difference here is, you know, less than two weeks ago, Silicaga was talking about, you know, maybe hosting a first-round game and, they, they've had, what, 42 and 40 hung on them the last couple of weeks, and it, it's not been a good couple of weeks for Coach Griffith's kids down in South Talladega County. And to me, sometimes that just that turns a team. It does, and it only take, you know, one one or two games like that. Most times it only take one game like that, and it's one, once the dominoes start to fall, you can't stop them. Giving up 40 and 42 points in the last two weeks. Uh, I think I may have to go with Munford at home. Hey, when you win a, by, down by 11 in the last minute, 40 and come back and win, something's headed your way and going in the right direction. Before we take a look at our game here tonight, Jacksonville at Hoax Bluff, we need to pause here for the playing of our national anthem.
singing of our national anthem completed here at Hoax Bluff High School. And we'll continue on here with the professional apothecary countdown to kickoff. Let's take a look at uh, this game, of course, our spotlight game. And this is a Region 6 title game tonight. Both teams undefeated, coming in to rank number two in the case of Hoax Bluff, number three for Jacksonville. And uh, they take on one another to try to come to help finish out an undefeated season if both of them can win next week as well. And, uh, of course, both of them are going to be assured of a bye in the first round, Coach, so that's not at stake, but just a region title. I think it has been since 99 since Jacksonville won a region title. Well, you, you know, that's definitely something you want to play for. You know, I, I was thinking about uh, the game in, uh, today in school. You know, I was walking by the office and saw our two region trophies that, you know, I was able to win when I first started coaching and uh there's nothing like it, so I know they're going to be fired up about it. Well, the Golden Eagles lead the series overall at 17-12-0, and, and they've really had Hoax Bluff number as of late, winning seven in a row against the Eagles. Uh, Big-time players, unbeaten records, and a region title up for grabs tonight. It is truly an exciting night for high school football here in Hoax Bluff. Okay, let's take a look at some of the keys to the game tonight for both of these teams. Tell you what, Grady, yeah. be before we get to that, let's go downstairs to Danielle. Mm -hmm. I believe she talked earlier with uh, Coach Robertson from here at Hoax Bluff and uh, get her thoughts on exactly what Coach had to say about tonight's game. Danielle? Thanks. Thanks, Jim. I did talk to Coach Robertson today, and he said that, you know, today is just a game to get them ready for the playoffs. Win or lose, they've played a great season, and he said that there should be no worries at all. Even though the field is a little bit wet, he sometimes worries about turnovers, so that should not be a problem. He says it's probably going to be a battle in the trenches between Meads and Wiggins, since they both are very close to 1,000 yards this season. So we'll see what happens there. All right, thanks very much, Danielle. And, yeah, two outstanding running backs for each team, Rontarius Wiggins for Jacksonville, and, of course, uh, Darian Meads for Hoax Bluff will be uh, the two guys that we'll have our eyes on. Of course, Coach, take a look here. For Hoax Bluff, mentally can they win the game? When you lose seven in a row, that kind of starts to wear on you mentally a lot of times. And that's what's so strange, you know, but it does happen in sports, you know. And uh, I knew Jacksonville had the edge the last few years, but I did not know it was seven in a row. And uh, that's that has to be weighing on those guys' minds, you know. And that has to be a little extra motivation. And it can be, you know, to the positive or it can be to the negative. Well, let's talk about Meads and Wiggins. So which back maybe has the best night? Maybe that determines who wins this one tonight because well, they're you, both outstanding talents. That's what I'm talking about you talking about two great great backs you know and uh got a uh, had an opportunity to play against both of them uh wiggins not so much last year because he had some guys in front of him but this Meads kid uh he's something special i keep hearing the words real deal when i hear about darian Meads. looking forward to seeing him and Rontarius wiggins as well and of course defensively can jacksonville score enough points to win again tonight they're going to be facing a a tough Hoax Bluff defense. Right, and yeah, Hoax Bluff defense is always known for being solid and being very disciplined, and uh, you know, those guys are they're pretty much gonna do what they're supposed to do. Yeah, Grady, let me let me interject this into this because I was looking at it at the stats earlier uh, today. Hoax Bluff's defense has not given up more than 21 points, but twice all season. And most games they've held people under 18. So the question is, again, can Jacksonville score enough points? Now, one other question tonight, too, coming into this one would be a quarterback, Ashton Gulledge, with a, a torn biceps in the throwing arm for, at the quarterback. Did not play last week for Hoax Wolf. Is playing tonight, and it'll be key in his performance because he's also a starting safety on defense for the Eagles. So we'll have to see how well Ashton Gulledge can go tonight with that torn bicep in the, in the throwing arm, the right arm for that young man. All right, let's take a look uh, as we get set. Coin toss will be coming up here momentarily. Forming the victory line. Both teams will get out with captains coming up here. Jim, why don't we go ahead and get our starting lineups uh, up on there. First on the board for Jacksonville tonight. Our starting lineups are brought to you by Mike Rogers for Congress, Alabama's trusted conservative leader. Vote Mike Rogers coming up on November the 6th. And now offensively here for the Golden Eagles. And obviously uh, it's going to come down to the Ron Terrius Wiggins. How he goes, so goes this Jacksonville Golden Eagle offense. Right. Uh, he's the lead on that team, you know, uh, he sets the stone for him. And, uh, you know, if he if he gets out, you know, he, he's a pretty slashy and pretty flashy running back. So, you know, he could create a lot of problems for Hoax Bluff. Let's take a look and flip it over on the defensive side of the ball. And really, not a lot of guys going both ways for Jacksonville. They've got good depth, so they'll they'll be pretty fresh. Of course, at the 4A level, a lot of time you can play guys separately, and that's Jacksonville's got that luxury. Well, that's a good thing. You know, I, I had that uh, luxury playing at Anniston. Uh, 
you know, having enough to go both ways. So, you know, you, you, you want to do that as much as possible, but you also want to make sure you play the best guys. Let's take a look at offensively for the Hoax Bluff Eagles tonight here. And, of course, again, Ashton Gulledge at quarterback, that injury is a question mark. And then Darian Meade's got to have a big night, I think, for the Eagles to be successful tonight against Jacksonville. And it is a, uh, a lot of seniors on this offensive unit for the Eagles. Take a look defensively now for Hoax Bluff. And uh, you'll see a few more guys going two ways for Hoax Bluff tonight uh, defensively. It has been a very stout defense throughout the season for the Eagles, and uh, they will look to step up and play well here at home tonight and uh, shut down a high-powered Jacksonville Golden Eagle offense. They are starting lineups. They are brought to you by Mike Rogers for Congress, Alabama's trusted conservative leader. Vote Mike Rogers on November the 6th. Captains for Hoax Bluff have made their way out onto the field, and of course it's senior night here in Hoax Bluff, so the seniors will be the captains for the Eagles tonight. And uh, Jacksonville, we're still waiting on their captains, and they're making their way out now across the far side of the field. The Golden Eagles led, of course, by Coach Clint Smith. And uh, Coach Bullock, you know what Coach Smith is most famous for? No, tell me what it is. He's most famous for his lawnmower skills. Okay. Yep. Uh, he cuts grass, cables, and everything else in between. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He kind of got me on that one, I was about to say. Huh? Yeah, we, we, we didn't put that on. You'll see here on the screen, we didn't put that in the card. We didn't want to hang it on him that bad, but uh, he'll, he'll never live that one down. No, no. You can see a great record there for Clint. And, of course, 11070 career record overall in 17 seasons. Really turned this Jacksonville program around. Has done a great job with it. And, uh, really, we got two of the good guys in the sport tonight with Clint. Smith and Coach Mike Rob Robertson coming up here at Hoax Bluff. Just two of the good guys in the sport. You see Coach uh, Rob, 23 years here with the Eagles and uh, 151, 104 overall in his 23 years and won the, the 01 state title in Class 3A. Got his uh, graduate, graduated from here and uh, of course got a degree from Athens State. So Coach Rob, longtime coach here at Hoax Bluff. As we're just about ready here for our coin toss coming up, our head official tonight is, is Keith Whitmire. And as the captains make their way out, I want to let you know our live coverage of tonight's coin toss from the field is presented by Southeast Auto Parts, your hometown parts store. You'll find one near you across northeast Alabama, including right here in Hoax Bluff. Shop us first. We'll have what you need at Southeast Auto Parts. Captains exchanging pleasantries there at midfield. Both teams hyped up and ready to go here tonight for this one. And we'll swing it down to the field here as they complete uh, their greetings and uh, turn it over to head official Keith Whitmire. All right, first of all, congratulations, guys. Great season, both teams. Good sportsmanship, okay? It's, uh, it's still a ball game. We're here to play a game, okay? Jacksonville is the visiting team, so they get to call the toss. Star is heads. Other side is tails. That's our head, and that's our tail. What's your call? Tails. Tails? Yes, sir. We're looking for tails. Did we get tails? We got heads. You won the toss. Yes, sir. You want to defer? Yes, sir. Everybody freeze. Toss? They defer. You want the football? Yes, sir. You want to defend the scoreboard, right? Yes, sir. All right, put your backs to the scoreboard over there with him, White. Yes. Oh. Give me a receiving. You give me a receive. Yeah, receive. There you go. They can. They preferred their option to the second half. They want to play defense. Our coin toss again was presented by uh, Southeast Auto Parts, your hometown parts store. You'll find one near you across northeast Alabama, including right here in Hoax Bluff. Shop us first. We'll have what you need at Southeast Auto Parts. Well, Coach, the hay's pretty much in the barn. We're just about ready for this one. Both teams getting ready to take the field, and uh, we'll get it underway here from Hoax Bluff. And uh, the Eagles, no real surprise there, electing to play defense as good as their defense has been this year. Well, I was about to tell you, that's the first since we've been uh, doing this. It uh, is, isn't know, it? Yeah. Everybody's been uh, getting the ball first. So Coach Ralph went back to the traditional method. Yeah, wants to put that defense out there and let them try to win the field position game early tonight here in this one against the Golden Eagles. It's been a high-powered offense, but, uh, you know, they've, they've had their struggles at times in the last few weeks scoring some points. Take a look at our current conditions. You can see it is an overcast and at times rainy night here in Host Bluff. 54 degrees here right now and uh, expected to kind of hover right here in the 50s tonight. So a pretty nice night for high school football. You may have a little bit of rain fall throughout the course of the game. It was raining earlier 
here when I got here this afternoon about 5.30, but seems to have settled down right now. Don't see any umbrellas up out there, so just a good, crisp fall night for high school football. Right. You don't have to worry about any cramping issues or anything like that. Maybe that's a little slippery out on the field. So we're just about set to go with this one as Oaks Bluff will be kicking it off for the Golden Eagles, and, of course, Jackson will be moving from our left to our right here tonight to start this one. And they're going to send back deep. Looks like 15 is trotting back there. Jules Gray, he is one of the starting wide receivers for the Golden Eagles. And we'll get you the other number here coming up. Also, number 23 is Carter Landers. I'll actually make that number four back there. That is Rontarius Wiggins for Jacksonville. Of course, we know his explosiveness. Ethan Whitcomb will be kicking it off for Hoax Bluff. So we're just about set. We talked to uh, all we can talk about it now. It's the sign, time to decide it on the field, Coach. Right. Uh, Hoax Bluff traditionally uh, does a sky kick. You know, it's going to be interesting to see if they, they normally does a sky kick to their sideline. So it's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do. Whitcomb will get ready to move on the football, and we'll get this one underway. And he's going to kick it deep and drift it over there. It looks like it's going to be Gray who's going to field it. Had a little trouble. Brings it back out. He has made his way across the 20 and going to get out to about the 23, 24 yard line. And uh, that's going to be about it. Looked like getting down there first it was Carson Eubanks, number 11 for the goal for the Eagles, as the Golden Eagles will be on offense. Luke Jackson will be your quarterback. And of course, Rontarius Wiggins, your tailback tonight here for the Golden Eagles. And he's going to be the man that they want to see really kind of break out and, and get the ball and do something here. They'll open it up. They run traditionally, spread it out a little bit, and they'll go into that gun look. And Wiggins will be behind Jackson. They're going to give it to Wiggins. First carry tries to bounce it outside, found a little running room, and he's going to be forced out of bounds across the way by the Eagles defense over there to force him out was uh, Carson Eubanks and Braden Hill. Well, just a little outside zone, you know, and he bounced it outside and used his little quickness there. So, uh, you know, that's typical Jacksonville. Picks up a nice gain on first down. Call it second down, and we'll call it uh, three. Picks up seven on his first carry of the night, does Wiggins. Jackson will look over the defense wideouts again. Uh, will be doubled to the right side, the near side of the field here. And Wiggins again, of course, the back, and they're going to try to swing it out, get a little bubble screen out there. That is complete. Gray's got it, makes a nice little move. He went bent over backwards on a big hit as he gets out to about the 39-yard line, making the initial hit there was Will Clemens from a linebacker position. He did a great job. I mean, he got what he's supposed to uh, get and uh, get, got the chains moving, so that's what you want to do. So Jaxel, two plays, pick up the initial first down of the football game. They'll have it out to their 39-yard line now and a new set of downs for the Golden Eagles. Jackson sets up with Wiggins, and now he's going to run a little reverse or try it, and Hoax Bluff all over that, just trying to get something back near the line of scrimmage, and doing a decent job of that is Jaden Barksdale, but he pays a big price with a big hit coming across over here on the near sideline. Will Clemens again in on the action for Hoax Bluff. Well, that's the discipline of uh, Hoax Bluff. You know, they, uh, they're going to stay at home. You know, you're not going to trick them on too many plays. So that'll put uh, Jacksonville back to the line of scrimmage. And, and really, Coach, it was Barksdale doing a really nice job just to get back to the line of scrimmage as well as Coach Bluff played that play. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and when you're athletic like that, you know, you're just able to do that. So let's see what the Golden Eagles will dial up on their first, second, and long of the night. Barksdale in motion. Give it to Wiggins. Hit as he gets to the line. Maybe gets forward for a yard. And that's going to be it. It's number 56, Houston Edwards, knifing through there and getting him down before he can get started. Well, a little inside zone action again. And, uh, of course, Hoax Bluff stuffed it up in the middle. So now you're in that situation you don't want to be in third and long. You know, third and maybe mid is pretty good, but you don't want to be in third and long. Third and nine now for the Golden Eagles. Jackson's going to drop back, absolutely firing it down the middle. Got a man wide open. That is complete. We'll have his first down as he gets to midfield. That one completed to Amorian Adams. And he'll have his first down for the Golden Eagles. They'll keep the drive alive. Carson Eubanks on the stop. Right. That's a great play. Uh, he just went and sat down in the middle of the zone. And uh, he almost lost the first down going back. Uh, but he, he was able to get back to it. And that's where experience come in. You have to know where those uh, first down markers are. So the Golden Eagles convert on a third and nine. Here is 
The give to Wiggins, bounces it to the outside, was designed to go inside, tries to get outside, break and tackle. Not breaking the last one, though, as he is absolutely leveled across the way. Big hit put on by Braden Hill. Hey, that's a great tackle, a great form tackle. If you look, uh, he tried to bounce it back outside, but Hill stayed at home, and, uh, you know, they got the pursuit right there, and you can see he just kind of laid the hat to him right there. He just kind of form tackled him right there, if you just look at it. And that is a loss of a couple there for that play. So it'll be second down and 12 and long again for the Golden Eagles as Hoaxworth almost comes across. And as we are just underway here in Hoaxworth in this Region 6 title game, Jackson looks to go to the air again. He's going to fire it down the far sideline. Man out there, and he's going to be out of bounds as he tries to hit Marksdale down the far sideline. Good coverage down the field by the Eagles. Want to... Thank our first quarter sponsor, People's Independent Bank. At People's Independent Bank, their mission is to operate local independent community banks which have as their utmost goal is personal service. They strive to offer you quality banking products combined with a friendly, comfortable atmosphere. Stop into one of our many locations across Northeast Alabama, including right here in Hoax Bluff. Here go the Golden Eagles. And Jackson's going to be pressured. He's going to be hit, and he is going to be dropped in the backfield. Hoax Bluff stepping up defensively. Houston Edwards getting in there and forcing the action along with Austin Elder. Right. He just uh, just too much pressure up the middle right there. If you look, you got uh, five uh, Hoax Bluff green shirts up in the middle. So, uh, you know, just too much pressure. Quarterback didn't have anywhere to go. So on to kick it away now. The Golden Eagles will see the drive stall out. Good defense there by the Eagles. And I think it's Kyrie Maynard. Maynard who will be on to kick it away. Good snap. Time gets it out of there. High kick. And it is going to hit and roll inside the 20, inside the 15. And on inside the 10-yard line is actually, I think that was Demarion Stewart. Number five is the punter. So Hoax Bluff will have it deep in their own territory to start this drive just uh, outside just across the 10-yard line, give it to him at about the 12. Right, Jacksonville got a couple of first downs on the play, but you know that defense stiffened up a little bit. So now, I guess we'll see what Hoax Bluff can do on offense and see how Jacksonville's defense re uh, respond. Well, we saw Wiggins for Jackson, and now we get a chance to see Darian Meads for Hoax Bluff. That's another thing we've been looking forward to seeing as this young man play. You've seen him a time or two. <laughs> hey, I've had to go against him three times. <laughs> You'll probably enjoy him more up here in the booth than you did on the side. Absolutely. Lines. I don't have to try to figure out how to stop him now. <laughs> Go with the traditional eye look. Will the Eagles? Gully's going to toss it, and there's Meads. Got a hole. He cuts it back up the middle, and he's going to have it out across the 20 near the 22-yard line. Upended there is Tay Loud on the tackle for the Golden Eagles. He had a gap on that left side wide enough to drive an 18-wheeler through, Grady. <laughs> and uh, he got uh, almost first down yardage. They may actually bring the chains out across. That's at the 22-yard line, and uh, that's very close to first down yardage on that first carry for Meade. Keith Whitmire will bring the change across, and they'll check this one, get our first measurement of the game. And so the offensive line really dominant right there for Hoax Bluff on that play. Absolutely. They, uh, you know, he, uh, Meads don't need much, I can tell you that. He don't need much. It's just give him a little daylight. He'll take care of the rest. All right, they'll stretch the chains, and we'll see if it's a first down for the Eagles. And it is going to be so close. Inches short. Nope, they're going to say first down. First down by just the uh, end of the nose of the football. So first and ten, head official Whitmire tells us. So if, you, if you keep his stats, he got one carry for ten yards. Right. He that's can't a, beat it. That's a nice little average, isn't it? Absolutely. Be interested to see if the, the dampness on the field, if we'll see any turnovers tonight, Coach. Well, normally when you have a situation like this, the coaches usually uh, take a day where you practice with wet balls, you know. And uh, so I'm sure Coach Robinson, you know, with 23 years experience, I'm sure he he probably practiced a little with some wet balls. Gellers will get back up under center again. And I'll go back to that eye look with Meads dotting the eye. And drops the football right there on the ground. It's still loose, and Gullage will fall on it back around the 20. And uh, Host Bluff fortunate to get back on the loose ball. Well, you just said it, Grady. So I, I don't know if it was a result of the wet ball or if he tried to come out from on the too quick, but you just said it. <laughs> well, now, he does have, uh, he is wearing a brace on that uh, on that throwing arm, so you wonder if that may affect, get in the way a little bit for him. Uh, didn't play last week against Cherokee County in a game that the Eagles had to come from back to behind and pull out in the second half. Okay. So he'll go back under center again. 
Gullich with the eye set needs. Again, you tail back, and he's going to get the ball again. Meads right up the middle. I think he, I'm not sure if he got tripped or if he slipped as he went up to make the cut. Adams and uh, Loud were in there for Jacksonville. Well, Holtz Bluff was in that third and long situation again, so, you know, normally when you play a traditional team in the eye, you know, you have to be careful of the fullback coming out the backfield. That's the most dangerous receiver that you have. So it'll be first down or third down and call it eight yards to go now for the Eagles. Hunter Burke is that fullback that you're talking about, number 30. Just a 10th grader. And they're going to give it, take it to Meade. He's going to draw back pressure and a little shuttle pass forward. And that's going to be incomplete. A dangerous pass there by Gulledge avoids the sack. And the Golden Eagles defense steps up and forces a punt. Well, he did a little Patrick Mahomes there. He threw it left, threw the pass left-handed. Yep. And uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if that was advised there. Gulledge is a junior quarterback here for the Eagles. And, of course, now Hoax Bluff will have to kick it away on a fourth down and eight. And on to, to boot it away will be Carson Eubanks, number 11. Back deep for the Golden Eagles will be Barksdale, Jaden Barksdale, number 13. Pressure and blocked into the kicker is one of the Golden Eagles. Not going to be a penalty there because he was blocked into the punter. Official... We're standing right there watching that one. Absolutely. I think the coach would be lobbying for that, though. You know, he's going to kind of see what he can do to maybe get that call in the future. But the officials sat there and saw that the, the man was blocked into the kicker, so that's why you, you get no flag on that one, though we may have a flag somewhere on the field. We do right down in front. We have okay. one. Okay. That's the sideline. Hello, warning. Clean, back it up. So we've played almost five minutes of this one. Both teams have uh, shown some ability to move the ball, but both defenses have looked strong as well. That's what good teams do. They're yeah. undefeated. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> hey, what you expect? I mean, it's great football, you know. It's, it's going to see who wear down first. Yeah, I think we've, I think we've probably got ourselves a four-quarter four game tonight, Coach. I believe so. Jackson will operate out of the gun. Wiggins there as the back, and you'll get motion this time out of gray. And we get a whistle before the play's going to start. We're going to have a penalty, and I think that one will be our first one of the game against the Golden Eagles. The ball, encroachment on the defense. Lining up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, repeat first down. It's signaled against Hoax Bluff. They marked it against Jacksonville, though. I think he made a mistake. Yeah, it is against the Golden Eagles. Okay. Offsides the call, which we've talked about that before. That's a little bit unusual on the offensive side of things. Right. He had to just line up. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time you can, unless it's an offensive lineman, most of the time the receivers, you can just ask the uh, official, and he'll put you in place. You know, all you have to do is just ask. And they're also motioning to Jacksonville to move back off the sideline over there. So they, each team has had a sideline warning here in the first half of the first quarter tonight. So the next one will produce a penalty. Absolutely. And you don't, you don't want that to become, you know, a factor in the game, uh, you know, not keeping your players and coaches back. So first and long now for Hoax, for Jacksonville, rather, first and 15. Ball back inside their own 30, back around the 29-yard line. Motion again. And they're going to run the quick end around this time. The jet sweep and making some guys miss and getting a nice little run there is Jules Gray who gets a good portion of that penalty yardage back before he has met Hunter Burke up there to make the stop for Hoax Bluff. I tell my guys when team, uh, when you study enough film and teams run plays like this, you can look at the formation. Uh, they run the wide out and I keep a tight end on that side. Normally I, I have a guy just spot that pitch guy. Yeah. Gray gets the four yards. Now it's going to be Wiggins with the carry right up the middle. He's hit quickly. And he gets across the 35, and that's going to be about it. As up off the bottom of the pile now is a big number, I believe 68 in there, Jacob Heath. I think it's going to be sort of rough for uh, Jacksonville to kind of go up the middle. Uh, Oaks Bluff is pretty thick in the middle. I don't think they're going to give up many yards in the middle. May have to try to get it on that uh, boundary out there. Now they're going to bring Wiggins out to 
the right side. They're going to flood it with four wideouts wide, sure. right, and they're going to go back and throw it back left and needing a block over there and getting one. And now off to the races. Jacksonville in space all the way down to the 40-yard line is Kyrie Maynard as he is finally brought down. But a big play for the Golden Eagles. Just a great throw back. They set up a little tunnel screen on the outside, uh, you know, and they run Wiggins out, which all attention goes over to Wiggins, and they throw back to to the backside. Making the stop that time was Dylan Boatner, a junior defensive end who comes down the field for the stop. So it's first and 10 Golden Eagles into Eagle territory now. And give it to Wiggins, running that off tackle, trying to bounce outside. He does. He's made a little shake and bake move, tripped up and uh, out of bounds across the way. I think that was Hill that got him tripped up. Just we'll take a look at the play here. This is just a little outside zone. And Wiggins had a uh, great vision, uh, you know, to let his block set up. You know, they just trying to wedge the guys and give him an opportunity to get to the outside. Gain of nine, just short of his first down yardage at the 29-yard line. As Jackson will now look over to the far side and we'll see what Coach Clint Smith and the staff will dial up over there for the Golden Eagles. Jacksonville with uh, the deepest penetration by either team early on in this ball game. Wiggins is going to get it, and he's going to be following blockers, keeping good balance inside the 25 down near the 24-yard line before he is wrapped up down the field. And again, Hill on the stop for Hoax Bluff. Right. They're just running a bend play. Uh, you know, he's starting in one direction, and, uh, you know, they're getting the strength call to that side, but he's bending it back to the weak side. Uh, which is a design play, you know, to get the defense to flow in one way and let the running back cut back against the grain. Jackson snaps it quickly. Here is Jackson. He's going to drop back, looks to put it in the air. He's got time over the middle into traffic, and that one is incomplete, and that was a dangerous pass. Gullage was down there. Hill was down there. Also in around the area was Will Clemens for Hoax Bluff. Right. Could have been an interception right there. And it uh, looks like a little shaken up is Jules Gray, who was the intended target down there, but he gets the helmet back on, and now he's going to have to go out for a play because he took the helmet off, I believe. And we've got a hold here against Jacksonville. So that'll be a 10-yard mark off against the Golden Eagles. Want to thank our first quarter sponsor, People's Independent Bank. At People's Independent Bank, their mission is to operate local independent community banks, which have as their utmost goal is personal service. They strive to offer you quality banking products combined with a friendly, comfortable atmosphere. Stop in one of our many locations across northeast, northeast Alabama, including right here in Hoax Bluff. So now first and 24 for the Golden Eagles, all the way back out at the 36-yard line. Motion this time out of Josh Bell. He will settle in over on the left side, and Jacksonville's going to have another five-yard penalty marked off as getting a step early there was Braden Hodge, number 74 for the Golden Eagles. Well, they're going in the wrong direction right now, Grady, so I can imagine Coach Smith probably getting a little upset on the sideline. Yeah, yeah, you have it. First and 10 down at the 23, and now you've got uh, the ball all the way back out across the 40. Call it the 41-yard line. That's right. So first and 29. Luke Jackson, quarterback. Made a couple of nice throws, but that's thrown a couple of them that were, were dangerous throws early on in this one as well. Right, and you don't want to try to get it all back here at one time. You got three downs at least. I think you can get oh, it in three downs. Goodness gracious, everybody is moving as that play was taking a long time to develop. Oaks Bluff came across. Jacksonville raised up. Let's see who they call it on. And it's going to be against the Golden Eagles. So now first and 34. Right. Jacksonville. I can, I can imagine Coach Smith probably want to run a couple of conservative plays right now. You probably don't want to try to check out of anything, just line up and run a couple of plays to kind of get your rhythm back. You know, last time we saw something like this, I, I asked you what you had called for a third and 32, and Searles and Lincoln took it in for a touchdown yeah. on that particular play. That's we'll right. see what the Golden Eagles have called for a first and 34 here. Looks like they run the same formation again. Yeah, Bell in motion, moves over to the left side, and they're going to hand it off to Wiggins, and he's going to try to pop it out of there. Breaks one tackle, and he's not going to get away from Gulledge and going to be right. forced out all the way back at his own 45-yard line. And he actually ran the wrong way again, so he lost, you know, another five yards probably on the play. 
Good gracious. I don't, I don't know that I've seen a team go this far backwards in this big of a hurry. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, they're just, they're just totally out of the norm for Jacksonville. Well, they're having to calculate the yardage. It's going to take a calculator and a computer to figure all this out. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as Jim said, second in Alexandria right now from here <laughs> on their own 45-yard line. The loss was nine more, so it's a second and 43 right now. Going to fire it out in the flat. little bubble screen to Gray. And he's dancing, trying to make guys miss. He does. Looking for some blocks. He's not going to get enough as he's going to have it across midfield and at least back into Hoax Bluff territory before he is taken down across the way. Well, Grady, he actually caught that pass and he, he ran 50 yards to get three. <laughs> yeah, he did. He yeah. was running lateral. Yeah, instead of getting it, turning it up the field. So right now, it's third down at the 49-yard line. So call it third and 37 right now for the Golden Eagles. Uh, what, do you just ran back and throw one deep here, Coach? Uh, you can, but I would, as much pressure as Hoax Bluff was putting on him on the pass, you know, I probably would run something conservative and maybe just punt the football to get the offense to the side so we can uh, talk about it. You know, he's take Got a man, and it's going to be knocked away at the last minute. Good defense down the field there by Carson Eubanks. Uh, had a step on him. Let's take a look at the replay. Right, and if you look, if you look at that play, the safety should the safety should be over the top of that particular play. This safety should be right here. Should be over that play. There's no way that this guy should ever get behind that safety. That's that's totally on that safety right there. So that was uh, Jaden Barksdale who almost made the catch, save for a great play there by Eubanks to knock it away at the last second. So Jackson will have to punt now from uh, the 49 of the Eagles, of the Hoax Bluff Eagles, as they've gotten it down inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Here's the punt, and another nice one out of there by Stewart. And this one is caught, though. And a nice return coming up here, just right up the middle of the field, and taken down. After a short return, that was Braden Hill on the return. So Hoax Bluff will take over for their second possession here of the opening quarter. Yeah, Hoax Bluff almost made a mistake on that. You know, in a situation like that, you never, you, you know, the safety should be as deep as the deepest man. You never let a receiver like that, especially as long. You play the chains, you know, you keep everything in front of you, come up, make a tackle, make a punch football. So here it is, first and 10 for the Eagles. Gullich with an eye set. Burke, the fullback, needs the tailback here for the Eagles. Motion this time from Eubanks. And, of course, there's Darian Meads. Hit and dropped immediately as he gets back up about the line of scrimmage. That is number 27, Sam Dingler, who makes this tackle. Right. Uh, linebacker just uh, slant down in the C-gap, and uh, just, you know, he was unblocked. He makes the play. So it'll be second down and eight coming up here for the Eagles, as Meads gets a couple out to the 30-yard line. Fast-moving opening quarter, other than all the penalties. Here's Gullage out of the gun for the first time. Looks to put it in the air with that injured arm. Firing it downfield. Got a man out there. Overthrows Carson Eubanks and takes a shot in the process back there. It's a great job. Uh, he had, had a step on him. If you look, uh, once again, uh, cornerback just got out of ran. He steps back, uh, and the receiver right re receiver right here has a step on him, and all he has to do is just put it on him. And, uh, you know, it's a big game. Uh. Marion Adams came in on the blitz and got a clean shot on the back there of Gulledge. But uh, it, is a, it is a long incompletion. Third down and eight now. For the Eagles, they'll go back into that eye set. And I think Coach Robinson will probably say something about that because, you know, with your quarterback already being injured, you don't, you don't want him to take too many shots. Gullich going to go back, hand it off on a little draw to Meads, breaks a tackle, got his first down, and then some as he takes a shot out across the 45-yard line. Big gain, though, the tackle made by Kyrie Mayer. Mayner. But what do you do on third and long, Gray? Do you run draws or you run uh, screens? And this is a draw right here. Draw back, stick it in there. That's just a quarterback draw right there. I mean, a, 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 a tailback draw. draw. That's all it is. And Meads, with his longest carry of the night, gets the ball all the way out to the midfield stripe. First and 10 for the Eagles. He tried a little Todd Gurley on that one. He wanted to hurdle the guy. Yep. 
Whiteouts twins over to the right side this time. Give it to the big fella again. Meads has got it up the middle. Three tough yards into about the 47-yard line, and that'll be it. Short game there as he is taken down at that point by Yesman Green. Meads is a low when you know uh, you got a little safety back there uh, like Kyrie Main, and uh, you know he weighs about 130, 35 pounds. <laughs> That's kind of tough having yeah. a 200 pound back. Come yeah, at Meads at 215 rumbling at you. You better get him before he gets ahead of steam. Going. Yeah, absolutely. You better get lower than he is. Yep. Here is Gulledge. Motion this time out of Eubanks. And they'll fake it to me. He's going to roll out. Got a man wide open in the flat and overthrows it. Had him out there. Jackson Fielding was wide open. Grady, that was your fullback. If you remember what I told you right here, the most dangerous guy is this fullback coming out in the flats. If you're watching, this is a count right there. Boom, he just come out right there. Full, he, fullback is the most dangerous guy in the eye. And Coach, he had a bunch of green grass in front of him. Absolutely. That would have been a big play for the Eagles. They just missed on that third and six now coming up from the 46-yard line of the Golden Eagles. A little bit of confusion on the set. They'll get it situated now Will the Eagles. Burke back in there at fullback. Meads will dot the eye. Here's Gulledge under center. And he's going to look to put it in the air, swinging it out in the flat. Got his man and incomplete. Hit immediately was Omari and Adams, who read that one all the way and uh, puts the hit on Carson Eubanks. And that's what they do. I, I told you earlier that good good uh, players make plays. They, you know, find a way to make plays. And uh, that's just what he did. He just made a play on that. So it'll be another fourth down here for the Eagles. And we, well, we've got another penalty flag, I think. Chop block against Hoax Bluff. I think they'll decline it. I don't think they want to give them another opportunity. And that is going to be declined. So Hoax Bluff, I would think, would, would kick the ball away here in this situation. And we're going to get our first time out of the game. Hoax Bluff wants to talk about it with 1.11 to go here in the opening quarter. It's the game of the week here on the Friday Night Network. I'm uh, Benny G. Adkins, and I had the pleasure of serving three tours in Vietnam. 17 Special Forces there. All 17 were wounded. Five paid the ultimate price. I was recommended for the Medal of Honor. Mike Rogers was a catalyst in getting this. Super honor and uh, very humbling also. Mike Rogers takes care of veterans. I'm Mike Rogers, and I approve this message. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. All right, we're back here at Mike Robinson Stadium in Oaks Bluff, and the Eagles electing to punt this one away after the timeout. And that'll be Carson Eubanks who will handle the kicking duties. Kicking it deep there to Jaden Barksdale. Gets it in there. No pressure from Jacksonville. Nice kick. Barksdale's going to drift over and just let it hit around the 15, and it'll kind of take a sideways bounce and be down to about the 14-yard line. So first and 10 there for the Golden Eagles. Munford leads Silicaga 8 to nothing in the opening quarter. It is Lincoln over Elmore County 7 to nothing in the first quarter. Sacks taking out frustrations from last week on Glencoe. They lead it 28 to nothing in the first quarter. Ohatchee shutting out Gaston 15 to nothing. Aniston is shutting out Asheville 21 to zip in the opening quarter right now. Alexandria leads Douglas 6 to nothing. Weaver over BB Comer 7 to nothing and Pell City leading Shades Valley by a score of 13 to 6 in the opening quarter. Oxford up 14 to 7 on Gardendale. <coughs> First and 10 for the Golden Eagles. And there's the give to Wiggins trying that left side again and finding the going tough. Up off the bottom of the pile there for Hoax Bluff number 55, Austin Elder. Number four, 
And the host book so far has done a nice job on Wiggins. He's really not gotten loose for much of anything to this point. Well, you, you're talking about a pretty uh, well-disciplined team. And, uh, you know, when they play teams like that, you know, those yardage are not easily uh, to come by, you know. Second down and eight now for the Golden Eagles. They'll have it out at their own 16-yard line. Jackson going to fire it out. A little bubble screen out there for Gray. Makes one miss. Can't make another. And we're going to get a flag coming in as Gray has it out to about the 20-yard line before he is taken down. Stop made there by 13. Jackson fielding. But let's see what the penalty flag is. Probably going to get a hole on this Officials will talk about it, and then Keith Whitmire will give us the signal. <laughs> so, indeed, that will be the call against the Golden Eagles, and I would think uh, Hoax Bluff would take this one and back them up. Right. It changes the play call, and again, uh, you know, the longer down and distance, uh, they have to change their uh, frame of thinking on play calling. So. They will, indeed. Take the penalty. Backs the Eagle, Golden Eagles up to the eight yard line. Make it first or second and 17 now for Jacksonville. Now they'll move it to the nine, so make it second and 16. And uh, Jacksonville, I think, will not run another play here. And they will not. That will be the end of the opening quarter. No score this one. It's a good one. Coach Bluff and Jackson, we're back with quarter number two coming up here on the Friday Night Network. Professional Apothecary has been the Talladega area's trusted hometown pharmacy for generations. We can meet all your prescription and insurance needs. Plus, you'll find all the basic over-the-counter medications. There's a full line of support hose, and don't forget to check out our Dollar Saver Shelf. When it comes to medical supplies, Professional Apothecary has you covered. You'll find everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and a full line of Dr. Comfort shoes. Thank you for shopping at Professional Apothecary. Just off the square in Talladega. I'm State Representative Becky Nordgren asking for your vote on November the 6th. Like many of you, I've been following what's going on in Washington and honestly, I think the liberals have gone plum crazy. They would rather ruin the lives of men and women who just want to do the right thing. I've tried to help restore common sense and the idea of public service to Montgomery politics. A vote for Becky Nordgren is a vote for real service. I would appreciate your vote. Vote Becky Nordgren, November 6th. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. Jacksonville will run it just off of right tackle there with Wiggins, and he'll get it out uh, past the original first down uh, marker of the yard line and make it a third down and about eight as he'll have it out at the 15, 16 yard line. So he gets about eight of it, gets about half of it, Coach. That makes it a little more manageable. Well, and again, right here you have uh, third and long. You're talking about nine yards or, uh, you know, eight yards maybe. Uh, so, you know, you look for a screen, you look for a draw right here. He's going to do a straight run to Wiggins, and he's going to be hit and dropped immediately. Nothing doing there. The interior of that Hoax Bluff defense is, again, up to the challenge. Uh, as you continue to see Houston Edwards and some of that interior line doing a good job for this Eagles defense. All right, just a little, uh, Cole Smith, just a little conservative there, just a little uh, inside zone handoff right there. And, uh, you know, I think he just uh, want to try to keep from making a mistake, you know. But Hoax Bluff is playing field position right now. The Mary Stewart will draw back. It looks like Hoax Bluff is going to think about a return. They're putting two back there, Braden Hill and Gullage just back there and no pressure and just a boom, booming kick that's going to fly over midfield, takes an Eagles bounce and comes back into Jacksonville territory. It'll be down around the 48, maybe the 40, 48 yard lines where they'll mark it. First and 10 for Hoax Bluff. Maybe they uh, 
best field position right here, Star. You know, so uh, you know you want to kind of play field position right here. It makes a lot of difference, especially if you have a pretty good field goal kicker. So first and ten, and uh, it'll be Meads and company going back to work here. Scoreless first quarter, and I think that's the first one of those we've had all season too. Right. Here's Gullage under center. Burke, your fullback, Meads, the tailback here for the Eagles. Tight formation and going to run a little toss sweep to Meads. He is going to have it inside the 45, running through tackles inside the 40. Fights forward for yardage down near the 35-yard line. As finally getting him on the ground is number 19, Draylon Fomby for the Golden Eagles. That's a tough run. I think they had Jacksonville out flanked there. Uh, had a, a tight formation, and uh, actually they were one block away from an even bigger run. So that's just a great job by Hoax Bluff. You know, maybe maybe something that they see. Just a student body right. And the Golden Eagles couldn't stop it. Here is a shotgun look this time. Split formation, and Gullich will keep it and dives forward. He'll have it inside the 30 down around the 29-yard line as he just got hit and lunged forward. Heads up play there, making the stop with Sam Dingler. Well, that's a surprise right there. You know, you got your quarterback, and uh, he was injured, and uh, then you come back and you run him up the middle, you know, so you can at least you know they are going for the win. <laughs> Absolutely. Want to win that region title. And we go back now to a more look, traditional look. Some wideouts to either side, an eye set, and Meads will get the football running it up the middle, stuffed. No gain. The ball comes out. And Jacksonville will have it. Was he down? I think they ruled think him down. I think so. <clears throat> Take a look at the replay here, Coach. Let's look and see right there. It's just a straight lead play right there. And he goes in. He's trying to cut it back right there. You can see. Uh, and uh, he just get hit. See if that ball come out. No, he's down. He's yeah, he's down. down. So good call by the officials. Right. Great call by the official. So third and four, probably two down territory here for the Eagles. I set. Jacksonville almost comes across. And now Gullich will toss it to Meads. Got a hole. Breaking tackles. Dragon tacklers with him, and he's got his first down and then some down inside the 25. As we take a look at it on the tackle, there was Tay Loud. <laughs> They just give a toss off the right side, and you can see him. Uh, first man just does not bring him down. You know, I believe that was Bolton there, and uh, just don't bring him down. You got to wrap him up. You can't hit him up high. No. <clears throat> got to get him around the, those legs and get it stopped. He is a powerful running back. Right. He's a good-looking <clears throat> running back, too. Shotgun formation again. Split backfield set this time for the Eagles, and uh, Meade's had trouble getting it. But he does, secures it, and now he's going to be hit and stopped after a short game. That one was kind of in trouble before it ever got started. Right, uh, just mishandled right there. Uh, 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 kind of bad exchange between the quarterback and the uh, running back, and uh, it kind of threw the timing of the playoff. Yesman Green, Joseph Bolton on the stop that time for the Golden Eagles. Second and ten, we'll call it a short ten, long nine for the Hoax Bluff Eagles down at the Jacksonville 21-yard line. Go back to the eye look this time. Have a little bunch formation on the right side. Both receivers bunched over there. And a play action. Pass Gullich is going to go to the corner and incomplete. Over. Yeah, had the backside wide open right there. A lot of teams are going to that uh, deep post on the backside. If you look on the replay right here, mm -hmm. they coming and uh, he's holding the safety. And this, this receiver here is coming all the way across the field from the uh, – right side and uh that's just tough to cover you know to keep one cornerback in and uh you make him the safety of the other cornerback run completely across the field had Braden hill just led him too much so i took a shot now third and nine for the eagles from the golden eagle 22 yard line well you're talking full down territory so uh, i think that's why they took a shot on second down now they're going to run a draw to meads meads looking around the middle breaking tackles nope not going to get away good job defensively that time for Jacksonville is getting him first and hanging on for dear life. That is uh, Jackson Moses, Josh Bell in their 17. Also Luke Jackson, I think I saw on the field out there. Well, I think they're going to uh, attempt a field goal right here. 
So here it is. It will be a field goal attempt, and it is going to be Ashton Gulledge who will hold it. And, of course, your kicker is number 23 tonight for the Eagles. That's Ethan Whitcomb trying to put the Eagles on top in this one. Snap is good. The kick is on the way. Does it have enough distance? It does not. Short. So field goal is no good. And the Eagles equals hold. We'll take a quick timeout. Coming right back with more here on the Friday Night Network. It's quiet now. But in a few hours, the stadium will be full. The players will get dressed and prepare themselves for the challenges that lay ahead. Players dedicating themselves to succeeding on the field. Success begins with having a plan, along with a discipline to execute it. A plan that begins with choosing the right financial partner for life. People's Independent Bank, where service, solutions, and smart advice are the foundation of our bank. Isn't it time you win? People's Independent Bank. You'll like banking with us. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. First down carry for Wiggins uh, gets a nice game, but we're going to have another more, more laundry on the field, and I think you're going to get another hold, are you not, Coach? I think that's what it is. I think you're going to get a hold on the offensive line. Uh, Keith Whitmire will give us the official signal, but that's what it looks like, and Jacksonville will be playing from behind the chains yet again. And uh, A lot of mistakes here for the Golden Eagles here in this opening quarter. Our second quarter action is presented by Hoax Bluff Hardware and Building Supply. For lumber, paint, feed, and equipment rentals, make them your number one stop. Located at 5601 Main Street in Hoax Bluff. Open early at 7 a.m. Monday through Saturday. First and 20 now for the Golden Eagles. That backs them up to the shadow of their own goal post again at the 10-yard line. Just makes it hard to make, uh, you know, your typical calls from uh, back that deep. It's just, it just tough. Marksdale with a jet sweep will be forced out of bounds across the way after a a minimal gain. Gets part of it back. It'll be second and long coming up for the Golden Eagles. And that's one of the few mistakes uh, right there, Grady, the outside uh, cornerback. Uh, once you read a uh, jet sweep like that and the receiver comes off the block, he can't block you and then take off a pass. So, you know, you're supposed to keep him on the uh, inside, and uh, he gave up containment there. Gain is four out to the 14-yard line, second and 16 coming up here for the Golden Eagles. Spread it out, trips left this time for Jackson and company. Wiggins in the backfield. And some confusion as the play clock is down to two, down to one, and we're going to get a timeout taken from the Jacksonville Golden Eagles sideline. So timeout on the field, and no score in this one. We're back with four coming up on the Friday Night Network. Serving Calhoun County for over 30 years, Crawford Office Supply offers selection, convenience, and low prices. Choose from a wide variety of office furnishings featured in their huge showroom. With savings of 50 to 70% off scratch and dent items, you'll find it all from pens and paper to janitorial supplies at Crawford Office Supply, including on-site printing, all backed up by unmatched personal service and free delivery to local business. Crawford Office Supply, 301 South Layton Avenue in Anniston. Remember, buy local, it matters. Less taxes means more money in your pocket and more money for businesses to grow. I'm Dale Marsh. That's why I offered the largest tax cut Alabama has seen in a decade. Plus, we dramatically reduced state government to save taxpayers another $100 million a year. Conservative Del Marsh, cutting taxes, reducing government, expanding businesses. I'm Del Marsh. It's not rocket science. Reduce government, lower taxes, grow jobs. Del Marsh for Alabama. Out of the Jacksonville timeout, it'll be second and 16 for the Golden Eagles here at Hoax Bluff on their own 14-yard line. Grady South alongside the coach, Eddie Bullock, here in the booth. And they're going to go deep. Got a man out there. Gray has got it all the way out at the 45-yard line. Got behind the defense and hitting him was Luke Jackson. Big play for the Golden Eagles. But once again, uh, Grady, you're going to see the same mistake again. You're going to see the uh, safety not come over the top. And if you look at the end of the play, you got a receiver right here, and, and the safety is here, and the safety should be in this area here. He's just not getting there. And Jacksonville has uh, seen that. They take advantage of it. Huge completion to get him out of a deep hole all the way out to 
the Golden Eagle 46-yard line. Now they can run their offense. Going to give it to Wiggins. Coming to the near side. Breaks a tackle. Gets a stiff arm. He's going to be across midfield and dance out of bounds around the 47-yard line of the Hoaxwell Eagles. Ashton Gulledge forces him out. So it'll be second down now and call it two to go from the Eagles 46 yard line. Motion and they're gonna run the jet sweep this time to Adams. Getting around the corner, Adams has got some room. He's down inside the 40, lowers the shoulder, stays on his feet. And finally taken down near the 31, 32 yard line. See, they, they are just not getting at the top of the screen up here. If you look, this guy's losing containment, and that's why he's out. They're wrapping this guy and letting him come on around. And he, uh, as soon as he see that jet and that toss, he needs to make the guy cut down on the inside. Tackle finally made by Will Clemens for the Eagles. First and first and ten for the Golden Eagles now down. Inside the 35 at the 31 yard line, play action. And Jackson pulls it down. He's being chased and he's going to throw the ball backwards. That's going to be ruled as a fumble. And Hoax Walker's going to have it. And just a very bad decision there by Luke Jackson. I thought he threw the ball. Well, he did. He threw it backwards. backwards so, so that makes it a fumble. Right. right. And Poor decision. Anytime you throw it backwards, it's a fumble. And as you can see right here, see, he tried to throw it forward. And he threw it backwards. And, and this is a total missed opportunity right here. You see these guys right here. Yeah. It should have, that should have easily been a scoop and score right yep. there. So it'll be first and 10 for Hoax Bluff on the first turnover of the ball game. They'll have it at the Golden Eagle 44 yard line. My goodness. And of course you had Clemens, who's the fullback, the uh, one that they could have. So, you know, yeah, they'll probably uh, get him in film. So Here's Meads getting the carry down to about the 40-yard line. Give him four. Second and six coming up for the Hoax Bluff Eagles. Thanking our second quarter sponsor, Hoax Bluff Hardware and Building Supply for lumber, paint, feed, and equipment rentals. Make them your number one stop. Located at 5601 Main Street in Hoax Bluff. Open early at 7 a.m. Monday through Saturday. It'll be second and six now for the Eagles. They've spent a good bit of the second quarter in Jacksonville territory. No points on the board to show for it yet. See if they can cash in this turnover. Here's Gulledge keeping himself, running with it up the middle, hit and dropped right around the line of scrimmage. Maybe gets a yard, and uh, that's going to be it. He was hit first by Jamari Burrell. Also in on the tackle was Jackson Moses, number 18. <laughs> So third down and five, Coach, possession down here for the Eagles. Right, and uh, Hoax Blow, best play has been the uh, tight formation with tight end and that toss. Uh, you know, they're just one block away from a huge run, you know, and let's see if they go back to it. Or the full back out of the backfield, out of the eye. There and it is. So house left and room and then some for Meads. He gets it out, got his first down, makes a man miss, cuts it inside the 30 and down. Near the 27-yard line, finally brought down over there by Kyrie Maynard. Well, if you look, they have them outflanked on that particular play. That's twins left, uh, tight right, and uh, they just got them outnumbered. If you look right here, they got them. They got the guys outnumbered right here. And all you do is block down and wrap the fullback and lead the running back. And there it is, right there. Actually, we missed a block on. Uh, this, this guy right here missed his block right there. If he, if he makes that one block on the inside linebacker, you may see a touchdown. Let's see if they'll come back to that some more. Here is motion for Hoax Bluff now. First and 10. Fake it to They got the Meads, fullback right He's got it. And has a little wheel route for the fullback, and a big play bounces off. Burke's got it to the 15, down around the 14-yard line before Yesman Green gets him on the ground. Well, great, I'm a big eye man now. You see that? Yep. <laughs> and you can see uh, yep. there's a fullback there. And uh, I'll tell you, the fullback is the most dangerous guy in the eye. I believe the fullback's your favorite player on the field. <laughs> uh, I'm just so used to the eye. When I first started coaching, I came in under the eye. So, you know, I pretty much studied it well. And I can about tell you, 
blindfolded of what they're going to run. Here's another look out of that eye set. This time it's going to be Meads right up the gut. Meads powering forward down to about the 11-yard line. And uh, give him about four, maybe five yards. Second down coming up for the Eagles. Up off the bottom of the pile there, Josh Bell, number 17. And that's just a straight lead uh, with the guy. And, uh, I'm pretty sure at some point down in here, he may come with the count. He may pull a guard, you know, run the full, full back offside and uh, pull the guard and uh, lead me to run, get the uh, linebacker to the floor in one direction. So second and five, they'll mark it at the 10 for Hoax Bluff. I said again. And fake it to Meade, fired out, and got a man fullback in the flat. He's hit Burke, and Dragon Tackler's in, and he's going to be stopped short, short of the touchdown, but first and goal coming up for the Eagles. And that's the counter pass, Grady, uh, what I was just telling you about. If you'll look at it, they pulled the guard round to this side, and they brought the fullback out in the flats right there. And just pure power as he broke through the tackle. Finally, a touchdown saving tackle made there by Sam Dingler, but uh, it's first and goal from the one. And I like Hoax Bluff's chances to punch this one in. Absolutely, I think out of four downs right yeah. here. I, I don't think they would attempt a field goal right here. Just Gulledge quarterback sneak and he's in with ease. Touchdown Eagles. They draw first blood off of the turnover by the Golden Eagles. And if you, okay, if you will, let's look back at this last play. You'll see the guard well, that's quarterback sneak on that touchdown right there. That's just a big on big. We're going up the middle. So Whitcomb will be on to attempt the extra point for the Eagles. 2.56 remaining here in this second quarter. And it took a while for anybody to find the end zone, but Hoax Bluff is the first to do it. There's the snap, and there's the kick, and that one is up and good. Hoax Bluff leads at 7 nothing here on the Friday Night Network Game of the Week. Hey, this is Coach Chris from Professional Pop Carry, and we're your hometown team. We take care of all your pharmacy and medical equipment needs. When it comes to medical supplies, the team at Professional Apothecary has the winning game plan. Everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and doctor comfort shoes. And we have all of your over-the-counter needs. Come see us at Professional Apothecary. Located on North Street, just off the square, on Facebook and online at ProAPO.com. Uh, Hoax Bluff High School here as the Eagles run in Eddie's offense the eye, take it down the field and put it in the end zone. Gulledge takes it over on the quarterback sneak. <coughs> Meads will be back deep for the Golden Eagles along with Jules Gray. And Jacksonville finds themselves behind on the road here. They were the behind all game against Aniata earlier this season before coming back and winning it inside the final 10 seconds. Uh, going to have to do it against a very good defense tonight with this Oaks Bluff Eagles squad. Here is Whitcomb, and he will hit a line drive kick, and uh, that's going to be Wiggins who's going to field that one back around the 7-8 yard line, bringing it out to the near side, trying to get around the corner. He does get around the corner, but he's going to be forced out of bounds up near the 25-yard line or so over to force him out Austin Elder, number 55. <coughs> On that return right there, uh, you know, the uh, guy had him squared up on a particular play, and he just outran him to the outside. I mean, just smooth. So Jacksonville now, we'll see uh, see how Coach Smith and company elect to play it. Will they go conservative, or are they going to try to get something going here with still 2.48 to go and a couple of timeouts left? I think it may depend on how, how well they get off on these first two plays. Uh, you know, I think if... Uh, if he get a big gain, he may try to go for it. And I think if he don't, he may get a little conservative and just try to keep the lead at what it is at, to halftime. Jackson will operate out of the gun. Now Wiggins will move over to his right. Four, three seconds on the play clock, and they're going to have trouble getting this one off. They're going to have to take a timeout. Golden Eagles with a timeout on the field. We'll be back with more coming up here on the Friday Night Network. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Etowah County Circuit Court Judge David Kimberly has presided over more than 7,000 criminal cases, including three to death and others to spend their lives in prison. Judge Kimberly is committed to protecting Etowah County from dangerous killers. On November 6, re-elect Judge David Kimberly because experience matters. I'm race car driver Cruz Schooner. Out on the dirt track, we put dings and dents in our cars almost every night. That's just part of the game. But when it comes to what you drive every day, an unexpected accident creates worry. At Skinner Body Shop in Oxford, we've been taking the stress out of getting wrecked vehicles repaired for years. We had the professional team in place to handle everything from the original free estimate to the final cleanup after all the repairs are complete. We work with all major insurance carriers, so next time the unexpected happens to you, call us at Skinner Body Shop. After taking the timeout, Golden Eagles back on the field now. First down and 10. Could not get themselves set coming off the kickoff here as Jackson's going to drop straight back, going to fire it quickly. Intercepted. Intercepted by the Eagles. And they'll have it again. First down and 10 deep in Jacksonville territory. Will Clemens with the pick as we've got a penalty flag back here at the 35 yard line. Yeah, he's just a uh, linebacker just dropped in his zone and. Uh... Clemens, the same guy, just got the scoop. <laughs> so yeah. he's having a big day. Will Clemens, the linebacker position, sophomore for the Eagles. And we've got a penalty flag down. Let's wait and see what this is going to be. <clears throat> Holding on Oaks Bluff, so that's going to negate the interception. And that's a big, big call against the defense, I believe. Now, did that happen? Pre-possession or post-possession? I believe it probably post-possession. I think it's a block in the back. So I think I yeah. think they'll get the ball, but they may back it up. I'm... I thought he gave a holding call. Oh, he did? I thought that was the call. Let's look at it again. Yeah, I think that's a block in the back on the return. It's okay. It is first down to 10, Hoax Bluff. Okay. So that'll take them back to the 46, though. Not nearly as good a field position as they had. Well, you're talking two time miles, though, in two minutes and 40 seconds. So, yeah. I think they may pull out two or three of their best passes. You know, don't be surprised if you see that fullback now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, that's been effective so far. And I think for Jacksonville, this is a big, big series. I think they've got to have a stop here. You don't want to go in down two scores and Hoach Bluff gets the ball coming out. Meads right up the middle. There it is. Keeps on his balance. Can he beat one man? Yes, he can. Touchdown, Eagles. Well, that's the tall step. Anytime you see that twin, for, anytime you see that twin formation like this, you're probably going to get a tall step in that area. And uh, you did, and they ran it to perfection. And just right up, keeping his balance. What good balance there by Meads, and then the uh, speed to just run away from a pretty fast guy, Jules Gray. Well, Gray was trying to get in. Gray was trying to get in position to punch it out from the back, but uh, Meads just too fast. So here is the uh, extra point coming up from Whitcomb, and just like that, Hoax Bluff has broken this one open a bit. Here is the kick, and uh, that one's up, and that one is good. Hoax Bluff up by 14 here on the Friday Night Network game of the week. Becky Nordgren is a state representative we can count on because Becky Nordgren isn't afraid to stand up for the issues we care about. I'm a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. I've worked hard to protect our rights in Montgomery. I believe in limited government. I'm fighting to make certain Montgomery doesn't infringe on our personal rights. Becky Nordgren believes in limited government. She has fought to make certain Montgomery doesn't infringe on our personal rights. Vote Becky Nordgren, November 6th. Paid for by Becky Nordgren Campaign. Sunglasses are important because damage from the sun's UV rays is cumulative over time, increasing our risk for conditions such as cataracts and macular degeneration. When buying sunglasses, you need to be sure that they block 100% of the UVA and UVB rays. Sunglasses should be worn year-round, even though it may be cooler outside, we're still being exposed to the sun's harmful UV rays. At Dawson's Vision Center in Anniston, we think you'll like what you see. 
short kickoff for Hoax Bluff. Wiggins has got it, gets to the outside. There goes Wiggins out across the 40 and out across the 45, just short of midfield where he is forced out. First and 10 for the Golden Eagles, and they will have 221 with one timeout remaining here in this first half. And now, Coach, after the uh, kind of going for it on that last possession, now do you play it conservative or down 14 nothing? Do you have to try to get something here before the halfway point? Right, and uh, I think Coach Robinson is uh, uh, probably a little bit upset on this kickoff because, I mean, Wiggins is the most dangerous guy on the field, and you kick it to him, and you could have kicked it out of bounds and they would have got the ball at the 35, but you just don't, you don't give them a chance here. Yeah, you got to you got to beat them while they're down. As good a team as Jacksonville is. A first and ten for the Golden Eagles. Going to give it to Wiggins. He's going to try the middle of the field, and he's not going to find it to his liking as Hoax Bluff is all over that one. And again, Will Clemens, who has had a big first half tonight, is in on that tackle for the Eagles. Right. You have to be careful uh, with that situation and just uh, watch it. You know, you, you, you got to keep an eye. You got to keep an eye on Wiggins, and uh, also great to be aware of uh, that receiver on the outside. I'm sure Coach has had a talk with uh, his safety, uh, Hill, and, uh, you know, Hill has to make sure nothing gets behind him. Jackson going to fire it out of the flag. Got a man out here. Good pass and a good route that time. That's complete for a first down. That's the Esmond Green on the catch. Just a great out route right here. You're going to see a great out route by uh, Green and uh, the quarter, just a timing route, and he just throw it out. Just a little bit too much cushion now. So first and 10 for the Golden Eagles at the Hoax Bluff 43-yard line. Still with a minute 46 to go here in the second quarter. Still one timeout, motion, and run the little jet sweep over to the far side. And Shed and Tacklers makes a move to the outside, tries to stop and come back inside is Adams, and then he's going to be taken down across the way. Gulledge over there to make the stop, and it'll be second down with the clock running for the Golden Eagles. And I wouldn't be surprised if you see Coach Robinson maybe go to some kind of cover two share. Right here, he's in a 44 split, you know, and uh, normally when you run the 44 split, you're usually going to try to play man. Uh, Here's Jackson, going to drop straight back, going to fire it out, same out route, and again, same man. Yasmin Green is going to have it down inside the 20, and he'll have it at the 19 as we'll take a look at that one on the replay. Well, he's just, he just giving too much cushion over there, Grady. Just uh, letting him get outside the quarterback, uh, dropping back, and uh, he's, giving him, he's giving him 10 yards off the line of scrimmage, and he's giving five-yard cushion on each play. First down and 10 for the Golden Eagles as they have brought it down the field quickly here after a good kickoff return by Wiggins as Luke Jackson and Yasmin Green, a couple of hookups on there, going to give it back to Wiggins right up the middle. He will go, spins, and uh, tries to get forward. He'll be taken down there at the 16-yard line for a short gain. Let's get you down to the sidelines and check in with Danielle Moss. Wiggins, before the game started today, and he said the most thing that he's important, he's worried about is getting to 2,000 yards. He's already done it this game. He believes that he can get further than that, and can't wait to see how this game turns out. All right, so now we're going to get a penalty flag coming in, and you just can't afford that if you're Jacksonville. Right. 34 yeah. seconds to go. Absolutely. You cannot afford to go backwards. And we'll get the call. Here's going to go against the Eagles, the Golden Eagles. And the illegal procedure call against the offense. And so back up Jacksonville now and make it second down and 12. Second down and at the 20 two-yard line of Hoax Bluff. You got Green just wearing them out right there. You got to be careful. We are out. And inside, got him. Green has got a Yasmin Green down just short of the goal line. First and goal for the Golden Eagles. It's a wheel seam. That's a wheel seam right there, Great. If you look, you'll see, you'll see this guy come out. You'll see him go in up the seam. And, uh... First and goal for the Golden Eagles. And he's going to have it down inside the one-yard line. Still with 23 seconds to go. Let's see if they'll take Wiggins up the middle. They will. Wiggins going to bounce it outside, cut it inside, and he is in. Touchdown, Golden Eagles, and there is a big answer by Jacksonville. That's just a little zone left action right there. They just turn and give it to him. Just a little zone left right there. and uh, He's just too quick to give him that much room. So Jacksonville, I think they go for two just about all the time, I believe. And 
and having trouble getting the play in. Now they do, and they're going to go for two. Uh, I think that is a common practice with the Golden Eagles. Right. Uh, you just had a, a motion right there, so I'm sure. Wiggins trying to get around the corner. He will. And the two-point conversion is good, and the Golden Eagles are back within six. Great comeback for Jacksonville just before the half. Two-point conversion is good. We'll get a timeout here on the Friday Night Network. I'm uh, Benny G. Adkins, and I had the pleasure of serving three tours in Vietnam. 17 special forces there. All 17 were wounded. I have paid the ultimate price. I was recommended for the Medal of Honor. Mike Rogers was a catalyst in getting this. Super honor and uh, very humbling also. Mike Rogers takes care of veterans. I'm Mike Rogers and I approve this message. An answer and an offensive weapon in Yasmin Green on that drive, Coach, as they uh, went to him consistently and uh, moved right down the field. Good uh, good drive of passing there for Jackson as well. Absolutely. Green did an excellent job. Uh, he just uh, took advantage of the cornerback on this side, and uh, he just basically, you know, in three, uh, two out routes and one seam route, and, uh, you know, they're on the one-yard line, so. Jacksonville's going to squib it. It's picked up by Hoax Bluff and brought back out. That's number 13 who on the return, Jackson Fielding, and he is going to be taken down out around the 44-yard line. And a six-point game now as we are 10 seconds away from headed to, heading to halftime while just short of the Hoax Bluff 44. So it looks like everything is going wrong for this Golden Eagle team, and all of a sudden they find the offense and just blow it down the field. And uh, I think they caught Hoax Bluff a little unawares on that drive. Absolutely. I think Hoax Bluff kind of let the guards down. And uh, you're talking uh, less than a minute. They score, uh, you know, and, and you're talking about driving possibly 60 yards to do it. And, uh, you know, that's just, uh, just kind of aggravating for the coach. Fun first half. After, after one half a play, it's Hoax Bluff on top by six. We'll grab a timeout, halftime report. Coming up next here on the Friday Night Network. It's quiet now, but in a few hours, a stadium will be full. The players will get dressed and prepare themselves for the challenges that lay ahead. Players dedicating themselves to succeeding on the field. Success begins with having a plan, along with a discipline to execute it. A plan that begins with choosing the right financial partner for life. People's Independent Bank, where service, solutions, and smart advice are the foundation of our bank. Isn't it time you win? People's Independent Bank. You'll like banking with us. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Less taxes means more money in your pocket and more money for businesses to grow. I'm Dale Marsh. That's why I offered the largest tax cut Alabama has seen in a decade. Plus, we dramatically reduced state government to save taxpayers another $100 million a year. Conservative Dale Marsh. Cutting taxes. Reducing government. Expanding businesses. I'm Dale Marsh. It's not rocket science. Reduce government. Lower taxes. Grow jobs. Dale Marsh for Alabama. Town & Country already has Alabama's newest Ford store in Pell City. Soon we'll have Alabama's two newest. This will soon be this. Town & Country Ford's construction reduction sale is on. We're making room for construction with price reductions. Find the year's lowest prices on over 800 vehicles. F-150s are up to $14,000 off or zero interest for 72 months. Construction reduction offers good at Bessemer and Pell City. Town & Country Ford. My wife Cindy and I have always been drawn to public service. Participating in nonprofit organizations gives us a special connection to our community. It's that same love of public service, along with my deference to the law, that has made serving as a circuit court judge in Etowah County such an honor. During my 12 years on the bench, the decisions have not always been easy, but I have decided more than 14,000 cases by being committed to an honest and just interpretation of the law. Thank you, and I ask for your vote on November 6th. 
Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most out of your Wi-Fi with the best whole home streaming and surfing on all your devices. That's 100 megs, $55 a month, plus free installation. Here to Hoax Bluff High School. 14 to 8, a good one here. The Eagles leading the visiting Golden Eagles from Jacksonville. I'm Grady Sapp up in the booth. Right now, we're going to swing it down to the sidelines with Danielle Moss is standing by with Hoax Bluff Mayor Scott Reeves. Yes, I'm down here with Mayor Scott Reeves, who is the mayor of the wonderful Hoax Bluff. Scott, tell us what's going on here in Hoax Bluff. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say, Danielle, we appreciate y'all being in uh, Hoax Bluff tonight covering the ball game for us. It's, uh, it's an honor for y'all to be here. Uh, Jim Jacobs and yourself and the rest of the crew, we really appreciate y'all doing this for us. Uh, I will take you back, I guess, uh, a few weeks ago, we had uh, Hoax Bluff City Fest. I believe it was our fifth annual. And uh, we had one of our best crowds, best turnout we've had. We had over 70 vendors. We had uh, some great uh, concerts. Uh, started out with uh, Foggy Holla, and uh, we ended the night with uh, Shenandoah, which was a real big hit. And uh, Marty Rabin and the guys done a real good job, and uh, it was a uh, it was a big event for us. We've uh, we've had a few projects going on in uh, in the city. We've uh, we put in one of the first handicapped playground facilities, and uh, we had uh, some help from our uh, county commissioners and uh, Joey Statham and Johnny Grant and uh, Craig Ford, our state representative, who's running for state senate and uh, Miss Becky Norgren, and uh, they helped us on this. We put in two handicapped swings where children or adults can be took out of their wheelchair and put into a swing where they got a full body harness. And we put in also one handicapped wheelchair uh, accessible swing where they can roll the wheelchair in the uh, swing and swing, you know, and have a good time. And it's right there with the rest of our kids. You know, we didn't want to isolate them. We want to keep them together. and. Uh, and that's real big. We've got a couple of businesses that are uh, looking to come to Hoax Bluff. Uh, one, it's been out of, uh, been closed for about four or five years, and uh, I'm here and there on the brink of closing uh, the deal to come back to Hoax Bluff, and we're tickled about that. Well, ho hopefully we can make that announcement next week. And uh, I guess you can see by this good crowd we have here tonight, Hoax Bluff is a special place, and uh, you know the people of Hoax Bluff really make our town what it is. And I serve on a count on the council with a bunch of great guys. Uh, John Moore, Geardale Young, and Larry Sandlin, and Eric Estes, and Scott Hassel, and uh, couldn't ask for a better group of guys to work with, and uh, just just a pleasure to serve this great town and these great people of Hoax Bluff. Thank you for having us tonight. Back to you guys. Danielle, thanks very much. Mayor Scott Reeves there. It is our halftime report presented by the Calhoun County Commission. Take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. Now let's go back down to the field and enjoy the halftime performance of the Jacksonville Golden Eagles marching band.
right, the Jackson Golden Eagle Marching Band performing here at halftime. Our halftime report is presented by the Calhoun County Commission. Take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. We'll grab a timeout coming back with more next on the Friday Night Network. Did you hear? You can get Cable One high-speed internet at an everyday low price. 100 megs, $55 a month, and save with free installation. All you have to do is call 855-CABLE-1. It's time to get the most out of your Wi-Fi with the best whole home streaming and surfing on all your devices. That's 100 megs, $55 a month, plus free installation. Now get high speeds like this at an incredible everyday low price. Get it now at 855-CABLE-1. In a world that's ever-changing, you have to be sure that your choices are the right choices. At Central Alabama Community College, you'll know you made the best choice. We understand that you need the best educational opportunities. Whether choosing a technical degree program, taking courses to transfer to a four-year college or university, or being a part of our national championship winning traditions, Central Alabama will provide you with courses and degree programs in tune with today's workplace. Get a sharper focus on your life by choosing one of our three convenient locations, Alex City, Childersburg, and Talladega. Central Alabama Community College, central to you, central to your success. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. I'm State Representative Becky Nordgren asking for your vote on November the 6th. Like many of you, I've been following what's going on in Washington and honestly, I think the liberals have gone plumb crazy. They would rather ruin the lives of men and women who just want to do the right thing. I've tried to help restore common sense and the idea of public service to Montgomery politics. A vote for Becky Nordgren is a vote for real service. I would appreciate your vote. Vote Becky Nordgren, November 6th. Griffin Laser Engraving in Lincoln is your authorized local dealer for personalized Yeti products. Get your Yeti customized for your team, a business, or a special event. Your color, graphics, even photos. At Griffin Laser Engraving, we make it the way you want it. Order just one or hundreds, and you'll find the full line of Yeti coolers and accessories on hand, even the hard-to-find items. Nationally recognized, but right here at home in Lincoln for quality awards, trophies, powder coating, and personalized Yeti items, Griffin Laser Engraving. Welcome back to the Calhoun County Commission Halftime Report. Take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. Hoax Bluff and Jacksonville locked up in a good one here at Hoax Bluff High School. Let's swing it down to the field and now enjoy the halftime performance by the Hoax Bluff Eagles Marching Band.
All right, there you have the Hoax Bluff Marching Band as we continue on with the Calhoun County Commission halftime report when you can take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. Right now, it is time to take a look at our first half highlights. It is presented by District 40 State Representative K.L. Brown on November the 6th. Vote to re-elect K.L. Brown, proudly supporting all the schools and teams in District 40. Like already being injured, you don't you don't want him to take too many shots. Gulledge going to go back, hand it off on a little draw to Meads, breaks a tackle, got his first down, and then some as he takes a shot out across the 45-yard line. In here. Yep, here is Gulledge, motion this time out of Eubanks, and they'll fake it to Meads, going to roll out, got a man wide open in the back, and overthrows it. Had him out there, Jackson fielding us to either side, an eye set, and Meads will get the football, running it up the middle, stuffed. No gain, the ball comes out. And Jacksonville will have it. Was he down? I think they ruled him down. I think so. And now Gulledge will toss it to Meads. Got a hole. Breaking tackles. Dragon tacklers with him. And he's got his first down and then some. Down inside the 20 on the right side. Both receivers bunched over there. And a play action. Pass. Gulledge is going to go to the corner and incomplete. Over yeah. Coach Eddie Bullock here in the booth. And they're going to go deep. Got a man out there. Gray has got it all the way out at the 45-yard line. Got behind the defense and hitting him. Motion. And they're going to run the jet sweep this time to Adams. Getting around the corner. Adams has got some room. He's down inside the 40. Lowers the shoulder. Stays on his feet. And finally inside the 35 at the 31-yard line. Play action. And Jackson pulls it down. He's being chased. And he's going to throw the ball backwards. That's going to be ruled as a fumble. And Hoax Bluffer's going to have it. And just a very big. That is. So it's left and room and then some for Meads. He gets it out, got his first down, makes a man miss, cuts it inside the 30 and down. For Hoax Bluff now, first and 10. Take it to I got the fullback right He's in. got it. And has a little wheel route for the fullback and a big play bounces off. Burke's got it to the 15. Down around. And fake it to Meads, fired out and got a man fullback in the flat. He's hit Burke and drag attackers in, and he is going to be stopped short. Short. Absolutely. I think out of four downs right here. I, I don't think they would attempt to field goal right here. Just Gulledge quarterback sneak, and he's in with ease. Touchdown, Eagles. They draw first blood. Could not get themselves set coming off of the kickoff here as Jackson's going to drop straight back, going to fire quickly. Intercepted. Intercepted by the Eagles. And they'll have it again, first down and 10 deep. Yeah, I'm, that's been effective so far. And I think for Jacksonville, this is a big, big series. I think they've got to have a stop here. You don't want to go in down two scores. And Hoach Bluff gets the ball coming out. Meads right up the middle. There it is. Keeps throwing his balance. Can he beat one man? Yes, he can. Touchdown. It's safety. A heel and, uh, you know, heel has to make sure nothing gets behind him. Jackson going to fire it out of the flag. Got a man out here. Good pass and a good route that time. That's complete. Man. Uh, Here's Jackson, going to drop straight back, going to fire it out, same out route, and again, same man, Yasmin Green is going to have it down inside the uh, Hoax Bluff. You got Green just wearing them out right there. You got to be careful wheel route. And inside, got him. Green has got a Yasmin Green down just short. He's going to have it down inside the one-yard line. Still with 23 seconds to go. Let's see if they'll take Wiggins up the middle. They will. Wiggins going to bounce it outside, cut it inside, and he is in. Touchdown. Goes right off. He just had a, a motion right there, so I'm sure. Wiggins trying to get around the corner. He will. And the two-point conversion is good. And the golden. There are your first half highlights presented by District 40 State Representative K.L. Brown on November the 6th. Vote to re-elect K.L. Brown, proudly supporting all the schools and teams in District 40. We'll grab a break. Coming back with more of the Calhoun County Commission Halftime Report next on the Friday Night Network. <laughs> Less taxes means more money in your pocket and more money for businesses to grow. I'm Dale Marsh. That's why I authored the largest tax cut Alabama has seen in a decade. Plus, we dramatically reduced state government to save taxpayers another $100 million a year. Conservative Del Marsh. Cutting taxes. Reducing government. Expanding businesses. I'm Del Marsh. It's not rocket science. Reduce government. Lower taxes. Grow jobs. Del Marsh for Alabama. 
The Standard Progressive is still available, but for those who have had issues uh, and problems in the past, there are more advanced technologies available. With these new advancements, the patient has reduced head movement, a wider field of vision, and virtually no swimming or swaying sensation that some progressive wearers have had in the past. Well, with today's computerized freeform technology, the manufacturers have been able to eliminate many of the problems from the past, like blurry spots or peripheral distortion or dropping from distance to near. I'm uh, Benny G. Adkins, and I had the pleasure of serving three tours in Vietnam. Seventeen Special Forces there. All 17 were wounded. I paid the ultimate price. I was recommended for the Medal of Honor. Mike Rogers was a catalyst in getting this. Super honor and uh, very humbling also. Mike Rogers takes care of veterans. I'm Mike Rogers, and I approve this message. Second half action just about ready to get underway here at Hoax Bluff. But before we get underway, let's get you back down to the sidelines. Danielle Mall standing by with the Hoax Bluff cheerleaders. <laughs> All right, Danielle getting uh, situated there. As uh, trying to get the microphone put together. There she goes. All right, Danielle. Hi there. Can you guys hear me? Awesome. Hi, I'm down here with the Hoax Bluff High School Varsity Cheerleaders, where it is senior night, and they have their cute pink bows on for breast cancer awareness. I'm going to let the three seniors introduce themselves. My name is Sissy Payton. Maddie Jackson. And I'm Aaliyah Goodman. And let's hear what you guys got. Pink gold, yellow coat, pink green, go pink green. They're getting this crowd fired up tonight, guys. All right, thanks very much, Danielle. We're just about set for the kickoff. Remember, Hoax Bluff deferred their option to the second half, so they will go and get the ball to start this second half. And uh, Coach, both teams kind of went in. Hoax Bluff had all the momentum until that very last drive for Jacksonville. And, and you might say the Golden Eagles might have gone into half feeling a little better about themselves than Hoax Bluff did. Well, absolutely, because, uh, you know, they had all the word to feel down on themselves, you know, and uh, they actually came out and uh, actually scored and, you know, on about four plays. And, uh, you know, I know that started lingering in Hoax Bluff mind that we still hadn't beat them in uh, seven tries. So, you know, it, it feels a lot better to go in up 14-0 to uh, zero than it does 14-8. to eight. Well, we'll see how the Eagles will respond to that last Golden Eagle drive there at, to end the first half. They'll get a chance here. Uh, Darian Meads will go back deep to receive the kickoff for... The Eagles also back deep. It'll be number 11, and that is Carson Eubanks. And number 10 back there is Braden Hill. I have a feeling that you may see Jacksonville keep this one short, though. They squibbed it just before half, and uh, they may do the same thing here. It'll be Demarion Stewart who will kick it off for the Golden Eagles. I hope Coach Smith wouldn't uh, try to pull an onside kick out the bag coming out. <laughs> I doubt that. We're just about ready to roll. And yeah, Stewart will move on it. And he is indeed going to kick a high end over end kick that is going to go over everybody's head and into the end zone. So Hoax Bluff will have the uh, full length of the field to go. They'll start at their own 20, first and 10. Jacksonville putting it in the hands of their defense. So they feel like that uh, they can come out and get a stop. And uh, you want to play field position. As I told you, field position played a key role early in the first half. So Jacksonville, we'll see if they can find an answer here on defense to start this half. They uh, struggled there in that second quarter as Hoax Bluff got into an offensive rhythm. The Eagles will look to continue that trend. Had a lot of success running Meads with the football. Just a, a couple of uh, quick stats for you here as we get ready to roll. It was Meads with 134 yards in that first half. Wiggins with 36. Here's Meads gets the first carry of the second half and he's got another big gain out across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Hanging on for dear life there. It was number 27, Sam Dingler. 
Well, they went to the twins formation, but they motioned back to this side and tossed it back to him over on this side. So uh, just a little wrinkle in the play before, you know, I'm sure Jacksonville was looking for, uh, they was looking forward to the toss to the left side. You can see him uh, bring the extra defender down. It's a Hawks bluff ad. Our Mead, Wiggins, or rather Meads, adds that 134 yards he had in the first half for the Hoax Bluff Eagles. I said, give it to Meads again, hitting the backfield this time, and will move forward, gets a yard out of it, and that's going to be it. He was hit immediately that time and just fell forward for a yard. Getting in there first was Amori and Adams for Jacksonville. Really the most effective player for the Golden Eagles in the first half was Luke Jackson, your quarterback. 12 of 15 with one interception, uh, 162 yards in the air for the Golden Eagles. He actually uh, got in rhythm and started throwing a little out route, and uh, it was just a uh, tremendous uh, communication between him and the receiver. And, uh, they did a great job punching it in. Second and eight now for Hoax Bluff. And so have it. Out near the 36, that's Meads hit and dropped in the backfield this time as he is punished. And a big play defensively there for the Golden Eagles as they hit Meads hard and often back there. Well, you had to try to get him early, you know. The, uh, defensive line stuffed it up, and uh, he just got in there and, uh, uh, from the backside and made a play. Got in that blew that up was Josh Bell. He didn't get the tackle, but he hit him first and blew that entire play up. So big play for Josh Bell there off of a defensive tackle spot there for the Golden Eagles. Third down and 11 now for Hoax Bluff. I set. Play action fake to Meads. Here comes pressure from the backside. Gullage gets it out there. It's complete. And first down yardage for Hoax Bluff. Well, depends on the spot. It's going to be close. I think they've got him at the 44. So let's take a look at the replay. Well, you just got a timing route. You got a counter play. They actually don't fake the counter. They block the backside and I'll just throw it to the outside. So that's, that's a great play right there. So that one was complete out there to Braden Hill. He gets the first down by about half a yard. So first and 10 for Hoax Bluff. So they'll keep the drive moving here. I'm a little surprised that Hoax Bluff on that play though, blocking the quarterback backside. You know, they, they continuously missing that backside. Gullage fakes it to Meads. Now he's going to roll out, going to keep it himself. Here goes Ashton Gullage across midfield and will stumble out of bounds across the way down around the 45, 46-yard line. And it'll be another, close to another first down for the Eagles. Well, that's an RPO right there. If you uh, look at that play, you've seen the fullback uh, out in front of him. And if the linebacker comes up, he dumps it over his head. And if the linebacker stays back, he runs it. So, uh, you know, quarterback gets to make a decision on that particular play. Gain of nine, second and one here for the Eagles into Jacksonville territory here early in this third quarter. It will be Eubanks coming out wide to the right side. This time for Hoax Bluff. I set behind Gullage. Meade's going to get it. And he's going to pop it out of there. Darian Meade's. With a big run back to the middle of the field and just tripped up. Kyrie Maynard makes the touchdown saving tackle on me. Well, that's just a tough play right there. That's just a lead. Uh, we used to call that our kick play right there. He, he gets him going in one direction and uh, he makes a shoestring tackle. You know, if he don't reach down and try to tie his shoe up right there, then he's maybe looking at the end zone. <laughs> Our third quarter action sponsored by Hoax Bluff Welding and Fabrication since 1967, setting a new standard worldwide in commercial and industrial fabrication from right here in Hoax Bluff, where they proudly support the community and the Hoax Bluff Eagles. Here's Meads again right up the middle. This time he's driven back and stuffed, as that time the Golden Eagle defensive front was all over that one. That's big number 61, Demetrius Hamilton on well, the stop. That's just a lead. That's a, a power lead off the right side. And, uh... You know, he just took it up in there, and uh, Jacksonville linebacker filled the gap like he's supposed to. Second and nine, the gain is one for Darian Meads. Let's see what the Hoax Bluff Eagles will dial up this time. This time, Meads gets a breather. He is not in there right now, and it's going to be Gullich looking all the way for his receiver over on the far side. Good coverage back over there on the back side of that play. And it's number 15, Jules Gray, with the coverage. Third down and nine coming up for Hoax Bluff. Just ran a little corner out there, a sort of a fade, and uh, he throw it out. Either his receiver can get it or nobody can get it up. Meads back in the ball game after one play. <clears throat> so it'll be third and nine now for Hoax Bluff. Of 
Clock has stopped at 9.21 here in the third quarter. Gulledge dropping back. Quick pass out of the flat. Got Meads. And he's going to have his first down as he gets in, I think, close to the 11-yard line. I think that'll be a first down. Let's see where they spot him. No, they're going to say fourth down. Let's take a look at that one. Well, just a little out route by the running back right there, and he made the first two guys miss, and uh, he's just a tough load to bring down, Grady. Just a tough load. Jackson Moses made the stop. It's fourth down in a yard now for Hoax Bluff, and Whitcomb comes on to attempt the field goal for Hoax Bluff. So Coach Rob may be uh, deciding to try to get some points out of this impressive first drive. Yeah, absolutely. I'm surprised he didn't go for it right there. Gullage will hold, snap is good, kick is up, and that kick is going to miss wide left. And that's the second missed field goal on the night for Whitcomb, so no good. We're back with more coming up on the Friday Night Network. Professional Apothecary has been the Talladega area's trusted hometown pharmacy for generations. We can meet all your prescription and insurance needs. Plus, you'll find all the basic over-the-counter medications. There's a full line of support hose, and don't forget to check out our Dollar Saver Shelf. When it comes to medical supplies, Professional Apothecary has you covered. You'll find everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and a full line of Dr. Comfort shoes. Thank you for shopping at Professional Apothecary. Just off the square in Talladega. Big play on first down for the Golden Eagles as Jackson finds Jaden Barksdale as we'll take a look at the replay and the Golden Eagles are in business. They're just a little tunnel screen right there. He goes inside and uh, they block the out cornerback outside, block the linebacker inside and just give him a little tunnel to run through. Just simple little play there. So Jackson over the first and 10 out at their own 38 yard line now. Luke Jackson out of the gun. Wiggins in the backfield. Barksdale in motion, going to give it to Wiggins. He's going to come right up the middle, and Wiggins pops out of there with a nice gain across midfield. Still dragging tacklers down into the 43-yard line before he's finally put on the ground. And that tackle was made there by, again, Carson Eubanks, number 11 for Hoax Bluff. So Jacksonville quickly on the move offensively once again, and Wiggins... Probably, yeah, I think it's probably his longest run of the night. Right. I don't know if uh, Hoax Bluff uh, may have got caught out of position on that play or what, but it uh, looked look like they're dragging a little bit right here. Barksdale on the jet sweep. Gets around the corner. There goes Barksdale. He'll have a nice gain on first down for, before being forced out across the way. Uh, that's by Will Clemens across there. And they're just not keeping containment on the outside, Grady. If you look out here right here, they just they got a lead blocker right here, and they're just not keeping containment. Uh, Safety comes up, uh, cornerback comes up and take the uh, lead block out, but that's what you want him to do. You want the uh, lead block so the running back can just peel around him. And now Wiggins on the carry off of right tackle. He's got another gain down near the 30-yard line. That'll be another first and 10 for the Jacksonville Golden Eagles. Again, the stop made there by number 11, Carson Eubanks for Hoax Bluff. So have it just inside the 30-yard line of Hoax Bluff. Luke Jackson calling the signals. The pistol look with Wiggins directly behind him this time now. Wiggins will shift a little left. Going to get the ball right up the gut again for Wiggins. And he'll have a short gain of about three yards or so before he is tackled on the inside there by Austin Elder. That's just a straight dive up the middle right there. Um, you know, I think Coach trying to suck him in so he can get the edges. You know, now let's watch the outside because that's where they had trouble at uh, the cornerback uh, playing man-to-man -man defense. And they're going to fake the jet sweep. It's Wiggins again up the middle, and he is going to lunge forward inside the 25 down near maybe the 23-yard line before he is taken down. And uh, that's going to be 56 in there. Houston Edwards on the stop that time for Hoax Bluff. So third down and three here for the Golden Eagles. Obviously two down territory. And they're going to give it to Wiggins right up the middle. He's hit and driven back, stopped short of his first down. That is a big hit by Darian Meads, who was in the ball game. And uh, he stuck Wiggins there and stopped him short of his first down. Because Robinson went to some of the 
big dogs on offense, you know, put them on defense. Yeah. So, uh, They're going to call that no gain, so call it fourth and three right now for the Golden Eagles at the Hoach Bluff 23-yard line. See what the Golden Eagles can call here. Try to make something happen. Well, you want to watch you want to watch uh, Jules up top now on the uh, one on one coverage there. Now they'll shift out and they'll uh, watch them look up top. And timeout taken by Jacksonville as Wiggins calls the timeout quickly. Looked like that one was a little unsettled. Let's get you a timeout here on the Friday Night Network. Ottawa County Circuit Court Judge David Kimberly has presided over more than 7,000 criminal cases, including three to death and others to spend their lives in prison. Judge Kimberly is committed to protecting Ottawa County from dangerous killers. On November 6, re-elect Judge David Kimberly because experience matters. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. Down and three to go at the Hoax Bluff 23-yard line. Grady Sapp and the coach, Eddie Bullock, here in the booth. Golden Eagles will go to a trips left formation. A single wide out is over on the back side this time. Well, they're going to run it. They're going to throw it, coach. I think they're going to throw it up top. Here's motion out of Sam Dingler. And now they're going to look left. Fired out the flat in the right. That's Wiggins. And he's hit, spins, and still on his feet. And he's short. Hoax Bluff gang tackling. Cole Wiggins short of the first down. So the defense holds for the Eagles as we'll take a look at that replay. Well, they're running up. Well, actually, he was stalking then, so they knew that the pass was coming out to the outside then. And uh, just good combination tackling in there. The lead guy that time was Austin Elder, number 55. So both defenses have held on deep in their own territory, and we stay at 14 to 8. And on big drives also, you know, uh, Hoax Bluff had a big drive down on the inside in the red zone, and Jacksonville didn't quite get in the red zone. They drove it down deep. First and 10, here is Gullich going to roll out. Got a man out here in the flat. He's going to fire it out here. And going up and getting it, making a nice catch. That's Braden Hill. And that'll be a first and 10 for the Eagles. Well, you got an RPO right here again, Great. Anytime, anytime you see him kind of creeping out and looking right in that area right there, he has an opportunity to run it or throw it. And uh, had his man just do a simple out cut. And... Uh, Throw was on the money. Good catch there by Hill as well. Right. I'll throw it to Hill. You know, he's bigger than the cornerback that's covering him. So, yeah. First and 10, Hoax Bluff. I set behind Gullage this time. And give it to Meads right up the middle. He's going to have about two out to the 40-yard line. They may spot him just across the 40. We call it a gain of a couple. Second down and eight coming up. Again, the sponsor for this quarter of the action, Hoax Bluff Welding and Fabrication. Since 1967, setting a new standard worldwide in commercial and industrial fabrication from right here in Hoax Bluff, where they proudly support the community and the Hoax Bluff Eagles. Second down and eight for Hoax Bluff now. Going to run a sweep left. There it is. How did you like that, Coach? I've been listening. You called it right there. Anytime you see that formation, you're going to see that top. <laughs> you called it. I paid attention to what you said in the first half. And I saw that little bunch formation out left. So, yep. So third down coming up. Get a couple out of that. So call it third and six now for Hoax Bluff. Possession down here for the Eagles. Leading at 14 to six. Gullis will go under center. He'll have wide outs to either side. He's going to run a play action fake. He's going to be hit, and he's going to be dropped in the backfield as the play is made by O'Marion Adams, who got him around the ankles and held on. Big play for the Jacksonville defense. Just an excellent read right there. You know, he did his job. He got pressure in the backfield, and uh, he just came up and made a play right there. That's what you want. 
So we continue to have a good one here tonight at Hoax Bluff. 3.43 to go here in the third quarter. And Hoax Bluff will be forced to punt it away. Back deep. I believe that's Barksdale, number 13. And that'll be Carson Eubanks. And he's going to run the fake. And he breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, got a first down. Big play for Hoax Bluff. My goodness. Gutsy call if that was indeed the call. Woo, that's a gutsy call, boy. And all he did, I mean, that was a fake call. I don't know if it was because the snap was high or was it a, a call. Yeah, that looks like it was called because he had no hesitation. And really just uh, opportunities for Jackson will make a play, and they didn't do it. And you're talking, uh, you're talking about four tackles that were broken. So, uh... And we've got a player injured on the field, so let's grab a step away for a timeout here. It is the uh, Region 6 Championship game here on the Friday Night Network. In a world that's ever-changing, you have to be sure that your choices are the right choices. At Central Alabama Community College, you'll know you made the best choice. We understand that you need the best educational opportunities, whether choosing a technical degree program, taking courses to transfer to a four-year college or university, or being a part of our national championship winning traditions. Central Alabama will provide you with courses and degree programs in tune with today's workplace. Get a sharper focus on your life by choosing one of our three convenient locations, Alex City, Childersburg, and Talladega. Central Alabama Community College, central to you, central to your success. It's quiet now, but in a few hours, the stadium will be full. The players will get dressed and prepare themselves for the challenges at Lay Edge. Players dedicating themselves to succeeding on the field. Success begins with having a plan, along with the discipline to execute. A plan that begins with choosing the right financial partner for life. People's Independent Bank, where service, solutions, and smart advice are the foundation of our bank. Isn't it time you win? People's Independent Bank. You'll like banking with us. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. It's quiet now, but in a few hours, the stadium will be full. The players will get dressed and prepare themselves for the challenges at Lay Edge. Players dedicating themselves to succeeding on the field. Success begins with having a plan, along with the discipline to execute it. A plan that begins with choosing the right financial partner for life. People's Independent Bank, where service, solutions, and smart advice are the foundation of our bank. Is it a time you win? People's Independent Bank. You'll like banking with us. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back here to Hoax Bluff. Grady Sapp alongside Coach Eddie Bullock as they continue to work on the injured Jacksonville Golden Eagle. And uh, he is down on the field here just a 44-yard line right near the end of that play. And I've uh, been working on him for quite a few minutes here, working on it looks like uh, a knee. And uh, I think we've got a word now. It's Yasmin Green, number six, who was a big part of the Jacksonville Golden Eagle offense. Absolutely. He was the one that... Uh set up the touchdown early uh, in the uh, second quarter. Uh, so uh, he's very important to them. I think they are, uh, you know, you hope that uh, nothing is seriously wrong, but, uh, you know, just hope that he's okay. Yeah, as he continue to work on him here down on the field. So why don't, uh, well, let's see. It looks like they're about to get Yesman up. And let's see, he is able to get up, and they're going to have to have to help him off the field as they're not going to be able to go off under his own power. And certainly... Hate to see that. It's been a good football game. Hate to see anybody get hurt. Right. Uh, you know, I just, as I told you before, I have a different respect for injuries now. You know, not that I didn't have it before, but, you know, you primarily was concerned with your team when, uh, you, when I was coaching. But, you know, being up in the booth now and looking at both teams, you just hate to see a kid get injured. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're all out there playing hard and competing, and you hate to see any of them get hurt and hopefully – He'll be able to uh, to bounce back. I hope that's nothing uh, too serious for Yesman, but he is being assisted all the way across there, and it's going to be 
we think, a first down for Hoax Bluff. They may have to go ahead and uh, they are going to bring the chains across here. So uh, this is a very important measurement. It's all going to depend, I guess, really on what the spot was. That's right. It's close enough that they need to measure. So they'll stretch the chains out here, and one sideline is going to be very happy, and the other one's going to be a bit down. Absolutely. Yeah. And we can't see the ball because it's right in front of the Hoax Bluff bench. They will stretch the chains out, and Hoax Bluff says first down, and it is. So the drive will continue for Hoax Bluff. <coughs> and he is right on the 48-yard line, so he, he didn't have a lot of room to spare there. Absolutely. I mean, uh, center mass of the ball. So <laughs> Try to get you some score updates as we uh, progress, showing 28-20 Munford up on Silicaga in the third quarter. Sacks all over Glencoe, 51 to zip. Hanley leads Talladega, 21 to 10 at the half. The last score we had on that one. We'll get you some more as the night goes on. First and 10 right now, Eagles. Unbalanced line. Give it to Meads right up the middle, and he's got a big hole. Meads is going to power his way down inside the 40 to the 39-yard line before he is taken down by Barksdale. Just a tough run. Just a, uh, just a little uh, counter play up the middle. If you see the guard come kick out, and know. Uh, he just run it up the middle. You want to get the linebacker to flow in one way and uh, run the ball back the other direction. So first and 10 for Hoax Bluff after that fake punt. Kept the drive alive. Now they have it down in Jacksonville territory, and they're going to hand it to the workhorse Darius Meads again. He's going to be hit. Breaks out of a tackle, though, and surges forward. We'll have three yards at least, maybe even four. As he just uh, kept running, Coach, just kept those legs moving. Well, just the same play again. You, uh, they ran the counter again. They uh, faked a, a full back to the left and uh, pulled the guard and brought the running back back to the right. Give him about three and a half on that carry. Brings up second down. And uh, call it just, just over six. We'll call it a short seven long six right now for Hoax Bluff. They'll go out and go to the gun formation this time. Wide out split to either side. And fake it to uh, Meads. Gullich right up the middle, and he's going to be inside the 30 and uh, the 28-yard line before he is pulled down by Joseph Bolton. And you may be close to another first down. I think he's got it. He's across the 30, so that's going to be another goal, another eagle first down. They'll mark him at the 29-yard line. Big drive again for both teams. It's a six-point game, a one-possession game. Oaks Bluff trying to make it a two-possession game, and uh, time is ticking away. Two minutes to go now here in the third quarter. Here's Gullett's shotgun look, going to keep his keep it himself again, and he's going to be hit, and he's going to be brought down again. Joseph Bolton on the tackle for Jacksonville. It's just a uh, pile right formation. Uh, you know, this quarterback keeper, you know, they're trying to protect him, get him in some space there, and uh, let Meads be that extra blocker, but they sort of forgot about Bolton on that play, and uh, you know he actually came on block. So. Game was three, second down and seven now for Hoax Bluff. Taking the time as the clock continues to run here in the third quarter. I set, wideouts twinned over to the left, and Meads has got it hit in the backfield and dropped. And that's a big play, knifing through there and making the stop is Josh Bell for Jacksonville. Yeah, he went on block right there. That's, that's, you know, I don't know if that was just a missed assignment or he just uh, whooped his man up front. But uh, they just uh, he, he kind of got penetration there and uh, he kind of blew up the play. So it'll be third and ten now for Hoax Bluff. Big down here on third down. Well, the Eagles have already shown they'll go for it on fourth down. Right. You may see some kind of play action here. Yeah, you're going to quick pass out in the flat behind the receiver, and that is out of bounds. And uh, is that a backwards pass, Coach? I think it is. Yep. It is. Uh, that's a dangerous pass. You know, you want to make sure it does go out of bounds because if it don't, uh, you know, that's still a live ball. Let's get you down to the sidelines. Danielle Moss has an injury update on Yasmin Green for us here as uh, she is getting – situated down there so we'll go to, to uh, Danielle here in just a moment and right now we're going to have a uh, fourth down from the 34 yard line now let's see if Danielle's ready we'll swing it down Danielle 
to Yasmin. It seems as though he has a bruised hip, something that they call a hip pointer. He is very questionable to return. He's sitting on the bench right now. They're unsure what they're going to do at this time. All right, here is Hoaxwell going for it. Gullage out there, going to fire it down the field. Out of bounds, incomplete. As he was trying to get it down there to Carson Eubanks, and we've got a penalty flag here in the backfield. Could be a hold coming up on the Eagles. And uh, Jacksonville would decline that and would take over on downs back out at their own 34-yard line. So we'll take a look at the replay on that one. Well, he almost got uh, brought down on the backside again. Like I said, his uh, protection on the backside has been breaking down, so uh, it's, it's, it's kind of rough on that. And the hold was the call declined by the Golden Eagles, so they will take over with 29 seconds to go here in the third quarter. And Jacksonville trails by six. And, Coach, we said to start it, we thought we'd have a fourth quarter game, and that's what we're headed for. Absolutely. You're talking 29 seconds before uh, we get to that fourth quarter, and uh, they decide who's going to take the region. By the way, a packed house here tonight. Great crowd for both teams on both sides of the field. This is a great high school football atmosphere tonight here at Hoax Bluff. Here is Wiggins going out in motion. So it is going to be four wides here. And it looks like they're going to set up a screen. No, they're going to go to the backside. And uh, it coming back to the middle of the field, breaking free. Here goes Barksdale. He is going to make that gray. Jules Gray is all the way down inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. First and 10, Golden Eagles. Well, great. If you look in the first half, they did that same play. They motioned uh, Wiggins out to quad set, and they ran the tunnel screen back to the uh, weak side. So uh, I'm not surprised at all they ran that play, you know. Jackson Fielding comes down to make the tackle. They're going to mark him down at the 32-yard line. First down and 10 for the Golden Eagles. And looks like they're going to get ready to run a play here before the end of this play. I guess they'll have to. He went out of bounds. So first and 10, Jacksonville. Here's motion. Mark Stone said it's going to be Wiggins dancing his way up through there. He's got a nice gain. And he's going to be out across the 25 down near the 24-yard line, and he'll be close to a first down for the Golden Eagles. Eubanks on the stop that time for Hoax Bluff. And that's going to do it for the third quarter. One to go. Hoax Bluff leads it by six after three here on the Friday Night Network game of the week. Griffin Laser Engraving in Lincoln is your authorized local dealer for personalized Yeti products. Get your Yeti customized for your team, a business, or a special event. Your color, graphics, even photos. At Griffin Laser Engraving, we make it the way you want it. Order just one or hundreds, and you'll find the full line of Yeti coolers and accessories on hand, even the hard-to-find items. Nationally recognized, but right here at home in Lincoln, for quality awards, trophies, powder coating, and personalized Yeti items, Griffin Laser Engraving. Town & Country already has Alabama's newest Ford store in Pell City. Soon we'll have Alabama's two newest. This will soon be this. Town & Country Ford's construction reduction sale is on. We're making room for construction with price reductions. Find the year's lowest prices on over 800 vehicles. F-150s are up to $14,000 off or zero interest for 72 months. Construction reduction offers good at Bessemer and Pell City. Town & Country Ford. Aniston Auto Trim and Body Shop is your best stop for full-service auto body repair, including all body work and professional painting. They also specialize in complete classic car restoration. When you have an accident, you want it back the way it was, and that's what you get with the team at Aniston Auto Trim. The same is true if you're ready to restore your dream car or a timeless family classic. They work with all major insurance companies and provide free estimates for every job. Come by today and see Stacy Jennings and the gang at Aniston Auto Trim and Body Shop, just up the hill off Quintard on Greenbrier Deer Road. Well, while we were away, Jackson will back out, and we've got a touchdown on the board for the Golden Eagles as we'll take a look at it. That was Jules Gray getting wide open on the play, Coach. Right, they just faked the play action right there in the cornerback. The safety went to sleep, and he just ran a seam route, and uh, it's wide open. And that ties it up here at 14 with 11.53 to go in the football game, and the Golden Eagles again will be going for two to try to take their first lead of the night. Here is motion, and they're going to give it to Wiggins, and Wiggins is in. 
Jacksonville leads this for the first time, 16 to 14, early in the fourth quarter here on the Friday Night Network. My wife Cindy and I have always been drawn to public service. Participating in nonprofit organizations gives us a special connection to our community. It's that same love of public service, along with deference to the law, that has made serving as a circuit court judge in Etowah County such an honor. During my 12 years on the bench, the decisions have not always been easy, but I have decided more than 14,000 cases by being committed to an honest and just interpretation of the law. Thank you, and I ask for your vote on November 6th. Jacksonville, the Golden Eagles have now come all the way back from 14 to nothing. They lead 16 to 14, and Coach, we've still got a whole quarter to go. It's going to be an exciting finish. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I, I, I can about foresee probably each team getting the ball at least uh, two more possessions, two more series uh, in this quarter. So it's going to be interesting to see uh, who finishes strong. Well, to be sure, kicking it deep for Jacksonville. Meads is back there. Also back there is Eubanks and Hill for Hoax Bluff. And Stewart's going to kick a line drive kick that's going to hit in that short zone, and Meads will have it back inside the 10. Here comes Darian Meads back up the middle, breaks a tackle, and staying on his feet out across the 30 to about the 33-yard line down there. Up to make the initial hit is number 40, L.J. Parrick for Jacksonville. Twenty yard return out to the thirty-three. So let's see what the Hoaxwolf offense and the Jacksonville defense come up with now. Absolutely. Let's see uh we, we'll see who wins this battle right here. Yeah, first time tonight that Hoax Bluff has been in on the trailing side of things. Here is Gulledge. Hand it to Meads. That's a pretty good start to hand it to him. He's gonna be hit quickly though and dropped as he gets across the 35, out to about the 37-yard line, Joseph Bolton on the stop for the Golden Eagles. Fourth quarter action is presented by Hoax Bluff Drug Shop, your hometown drug store for all your prescription and over-the-counter medical needs. They also offer flu vaccines on location, and they deliver in the immediate Hoax Bluff area. Call 256-494-1918 for your local Health Mart Pharmacy, Hoax Bluff Drug Shop. <coughs> Give him a gain of five as they'll mark that out closer to the 37-yard line. We'll call it second down and six. Here's motion. Out of heel. And now we're going to have a we're going to have a timeout taken by Hoax Bluff. Comes with 10:59 remaining in the football game. We're back with more coming up on the Friday night that one. I'm race car driver Curtis Skinner. Out on the dirt track, we put dings and dents in our cars almost every night. That's just part of the game. But when it comes to what you drive every day, an unexpected accident creates worry. At Skinner Body Shop in Oxford, we've been taking the stress out of getting wrecked vehicles repaired for years. We had the professional team in place to handle everything from the original free estimate to the final cleanup after all the repairs are complete. We work with all major insurance carriers, so next time the unexpected happens to you, call us at Skinner Body Shop. We welcome you back here to Coach Mike Robertson Field and Stadium here in Hoax Bluff where Hoax Bluff Eagles have led throughout the game, but they find themselves on the short end of the 16-14 score now as Jacksonville has come roaring back and uh, with two touchdowns and two two-point conversions, they lead this one here on the road. Second down, and we'll call it five to go for Hoax Bluff after the timeout. And Gellich going to hand it to Meads in the backfield, hit and dropped. Good defense there by the Golden Eagles, and that's going to be a loss of a yard or so. And that time, Memorian Adams gets the sack, or not the sack, but the stop. And uh, call it third and uh, six coming up right now from the 38-yard line. So the Golden Eagles trying to come up with a stop. Hooks Bluff. Trying to figure out a way to keep the drive alive here. Gulledge looking out to the right side into the flat. He's got Meads and he drops it. In the hands and was thinking about cutting up field and drops the football. So it'll be hunting time for Hoax Bluff as we'll take a look at the replay. Well, just a uh, look. Tailback fly right there. And, uh, you know, Meads had it and he tried to run with it before he got it. So, you know, just kind of took his focus off the football there. 
Well, all right, let's see if uh, Jackson will play a defense safe. I think they will. I don't know if you'll – well, you're going to see Barksdale drift back. He'll be back deep to receive it. Everybody else is going to be up near the line of scrimmage, and I don't think anybody will go to sleep anymore. High snap again and getting it out of there. And a nice kick by Carson Eubanks that Barksdale will stay away from. It'll take a Jacksonville bounce and be down there by Hoax Bluff. So the Golden Eagles will have it with 10.09 to go. And a first down and 10 out across their own 30 at around the 33-yard line. Munford and Silicaga, a tight one, 28-26. Munford leads it in the fourth quarter. Again, that one is a play-in game, if you will. Winner goes on to the playoffs. The loser is done for the year. So the Golden Eagles back to work leading for the first time tonight. And it's like some confusion on the play. Now Jackson will come back out. We may have a clock problem there. Now the official is ready to blow it in play. So full 25 seconds to work with here for Jackson. I think you'll see it on the ground unless they just have to put it in the air. Wiggins trying to get outside, uh, slip and tackles, and he's going to have a nice, decent gain of about three, four yards over there. It looked like he was going to be down in the backfield, Coach. Absolutely. He's just hard to tackle. You know, he's a uh, very smooth runner, very shifty. And, uh, you know, he's just, you know, watching him in person, he's just, he's just hard to bring down. Now give him four on that carry, so second down and six. He does get uh, forced out of bounds, so that will stop the clock. And Jacksonville. We'll have Jackson looking over now. Getting the play call in from the sidelines. Now motion. And give it to Wiggins again. And Wiggins just right up the middle, turning and backing his way forward. And he's going to be near his first down, maybe about a yard short or so. And it's just good power football that time by Rontarius Wiggins and the Jacksonville Golden Eagles. Eubanks up off the bottom of the pile for Hoax Bluff. Absolutely. He just, uh, you know, he ran and got what he could and uh, turned his back, and he just kind of piled himself uh, toward that first down marker there. There you see the team rundown for the Jacksonville Golden Eagles. They haven't won a region championship since 1999. Here it is, third down and short. And the uh, end around jet sweep has not gone to work. Big defensive stop there for Hoax Bluff. That's Ashton Gulledge who comes up and makes the tackle for loss. And Jacksonville will have to kick it away. And the uh, jet sweep didn't work at all that time, Coach. Absolutely. They got uh, Kyrie Mayner in the backfield. Uh, they just had good pursuit on it there, you know. Uh, I'm sure Coach Smith is going to punt this football. but uh, Well, I, I would have liked to have. I'm a Jacksonville fan, probably would have liked to have seen that ball just go up the middle on third and less than a yard. But. Yeah, absolutely. You want to stick with Wiggins. You know, I'll take my chances with Wiggins right there instead of trying to get outside. But the, the next play I coach will be my second. I have coached one play Come on, years ago. And the ball's going to roll dead inside the 15, down about the 14 with eight and a half to go in this one. So Hooks Bluff will have a long field to operate with here to try to get back in this one down by two. Well, this drive is going to be important right here, Grady, because, uh, you know, they're playing against the clock, even though you have eight and a half minutes. Uh, you know, they're still in high school. That's not a ton of time, uh, you know, for a possession team, you know, good defense that's making the stops the way Josh Bell is playing now, you know. And each team has used one timeout here in this second half, so each of them with two timeouts should it come down to something at the end of this one. So first and ten, Hoax Bluff. They're on 13-yard line. Meads. He's in the backfield, and he'll be the long back in, in there as Gullage under center fakes it to Meads. He's going to roll right. He's going to fire it out in the flat. He's got it complete, and a nice gain on first down as he finds Tristan Billingsley out there, number three. Well, you got a missed block again out there on the, out there on the receiver, and, uh, you know, he's one, one block away from that being a huge gain right there. It's a great play call. Gain of seven, so second down and three here for the Eagles. I think you'll probably see a little bit more throwing on first down so they can open it up for Meads because yeah. that, that opens it up for him. They'll go twins left this time. A little bit of an offset eye, and here comes Meads running left. Got a big hole. There goes Meads. 
One man to beat, and he is going to be tackled there. That is Kyrie Maynard, who hangs on for a, what was a touchdown saving tackle on Meads. Absolutely. Again, you see, just come straight uh, lead. You got a kick out block right there on uh, Adams, and uh, he just turns it up. You know, uh, Kyrie makes a great t tackle there. You know, if he don't stop that transfer truck coming down, <laughs> that's a touchdown. Yes, sir. So it is all the way out to the 40 here. In a couple of plays for Hoax Bluff from their own 13 to the 40, 27 quick yards, and the drive is alive and well for the Eagles. Fake it. Gullich rolling to his left, trying to get to the corner, fires it off the back foot. Got a man out there. It's caught. Good catch there by Carson Eubanks, and here come the Eagles. Once again, Grady, that's the uh, pass, and you see the receiver comes all the way across the field. They got great pressure of. Uh, he just got off a good throw right there, but once again, you've seen him throw the ball on first down, which opened it up, so I wouldn't be surprised if they don't come right back with a run again to me. Got the defense a little bit on their heels right now. Ball at the 39-yard line of the Golden Eagles. Gullich will be under center. Meads the lone back, and he's going to get the carry this time, running off right tackle, hit, and dragon tacklers. He'll have a, a short game, give him about three or so, and it'll be second down and seven coming up. 68 that time on the tackle for Jacksonville. That's Cole Gaddy. Give him two. Second down and eight from the 37-yard line. Four down territory with no doubt about it for Hoax Bluff at this point. Yeah, absolutely. Where they are right now. Right. They have to uh, They have to get some out of this drive right here because there's no guarantee they'll get the football back. If they have to point or turn it over on downs, they probably won't get the ball back. From and we're going to get a whistle. We're going to have a timeout taken by the Hoax Bluff Eagles with 6.31 to go. Eagles trail by 4-2 here on the Friday Night Network Game of the Week. Becky Nordgren is a state representative we can count on because Becky Nordgren isn't afraid to stand up for the issues we care about. I'm a strong supporter of the Second Amendment. I've worked hard to protect our rights in Montgomery. I believe in limited government. I'm fighting to make certain Montgomery doesn't infringe on our personal rights. Becky Nordgren believes in limited government. She has fought to make certain Montgomery doesn't infringe on our personal rights. Vote Becky Nordgren, November 6th. Paid for by Becky Nordgren Campaign. I'm uh, Benny G. Adkins, and I had the pleasure of serving three tours in Vietnam. Seventeen Special Forces there. All 17 were wounded. I paid the ultimate price. I was recommended for the Medal of Honor. Ike Rogers was a catalyst in getting this. Super honor and uh, very humbling also. Mike Rogers takes care of veterans. I'm Mike Rogers, and I approve this message. As we come back, we get a whistle and a flag as Hoax Bluff comes out of the timeout, and that would seem to indicate it's going to be something on the offense, and that could be a big penalty for this Eagles offense as they have a good drive going. Let's get the call. Illegal procedure. So five-yard step off. We haven't seen very many penalties on Hoax Bluff tonight. They've played really a pretty mistake-free football game to this point, but now it'll be second down and call it. Call it second down at 12 at the 41-yard line. And they use a uh, pretty disciplined, uh, you know, from my experience, from, you know, but this is a uh, tough time in the game, you know, to get uh, a penalty. You know. They were at 631, so they exactly two minutes from when they uh, first got the ball. So, you know, they got they got this down and two more to get this first down. So Gullich, play action fake. He's got trying to set up the screen. He's got it, but Jacksonville plays it pretty well. Meads, though. Just using athletic ability, gets it all the way down to the 35, maybe the 34, 33 yard line they're going to give him as we'll take a look at the replay. Just tough to tackle right there. If you look, Grady, when he catches that ball right here, Bolton has him in his sights right here, locked up, and he just, he just make him miss. He just yeah. makes him miss. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for uh, six to eight right here hustling behind the play. Gaddy, yeah. Uh, that would have been a big play right there. And that's what you do defensively, but that's what great backs do offensively. They just, just make guys miss. Here it is. Give it to me. It's on third down, and he's going to be hit and dropped right around the line of scrimmage. Might have got a yard, and that's it. And is that Meads who was slow to get up? It is. Meads is down on the ground. He's going to get up now. Looks like he uh, a little shaken up with the shoulder there. Right. He may have gotten a sting on the shoulder, so, you know. 
He'll stay in the game, and we're looking at a fourth and four now for Hoax Bluff. And as you said, Coach, with one timeout left, this could be the ball game right now for Hoax Bluff. Right, and that, that, that may have been a situation where you, you, you may want to use your horse at the end, or you may want to uh, probably would have used him as a decoy there to see if the quarterback probably could have pulled it and you could have gotten a first down right there. I think everybody know right here, you're probably going to give it to me. No, they're going to run a play action, and Gulledge breaks a tackle, and he is going to be first down, I believe. There's two Jacksonville defenders at him. They ran together. That was Adams and also Josh Bell, and I think Coach Luff has got a first out of it. That's where the knee goes down. As we've got a Jacksonville injury, and that is Josh Bell. And right now, with an injury on the field and uh, very close again on the first down spot, we'll step away, grab a timeout here on the Friday Night Network. We're back with more coming up. Serving Calhoun County for over 30 years, Crawford Office Supply offers selection, convenience, and low prices. Choose from a wide variety of office furnishings featured in their huge showroom. With savings of 50 to 70% off scratch and dent items, you'll find it all from pens and paper to janitorial supplies at Crawford Office Supply, including on-site printing, all backed up by unmatched personal service and free delivery to local business. Crawford Office Supply, 301 South Layton Avenue in Anniston. Remember, buy local, it matters. What's behind the CA? A world full of opportunities. Where are you now? Where are you going? Where do you want to be? These are all important in determining your path in life. More importantly, why be ordinary when you can be extraordinary? At Central Alabama Community College, you can be anything you wish to be. Don't put your future on hold and don't settle for less than excellence. We are Central Alabama Community College. Central to you. Central to your success. That's all. <laughs> we welcome you back here to Hoax Bluff High School where a big measurement coming up right now. Uh, it's going to be another close one for the Hoax Bluff Eagles to see if they got the first down. That was a fourth down play with 457. Josh Bell had to be assisted off of the field after that play. And so another one of the, the real good players for Jacksonville. They'll stretch the chains. And uh, that's going to be very close. And it is Jacksonville football by just that much. Great shot by the cameras. Coach, you called that and said it looked like he might be short. Yeah, I was looking at it. I was looking at that spot. It didn't look like he got it to me. And, uh, yeah. Huge play in this one. Golden Eagles will take over with 4.57 remaining. Our fourth quarter sponsor, Hoax Bluff Drug Shop, your hometown drugstore for all your prescription and over-the-counter medical needs. They also offer flu vaccines on location, and they deliver in the immediate, in the immediate Hoax Bluff area. Call 256-494-1918 for your local Health Mart Pharmacy, Hoax Bluff Drug Shop. First and 10, Golden Eagles. They're on 29-yard line. Give it to Wiggins. There's the man breaking through and slips as he goes to make a cut. And uh, he'll go down, and that might have been a lot bigger play had he not slipped. Absolutely. Uh, and he, uh, That's that bend play again, the motion, the guy that started one way and a bending back. And I think Oaks Bluff is just over-pursuing. Uh, but uh, you're looking at a couple of first downs here, Brady. I think if they get a couple of first downs, uh, you can call the ball game. <laughs> Yeah, Hoax Bluff can only stop it one more time. They've got one timeout left. Golden Eagles going to give it to Wiggins, and he's going to break free and have across the 40, still running hard, diving forward out to the 45-yard line. Gulledge gets him on the ground, but it's a first and 10 for the Golden Eagles. <laughs> It's been a heck of a football game. Whichever way it ends up, it's been a heck of a football Absolutely. game. Absolutely. It's been a great football game. Uh, you know, two heavyweight. Mm -hmm. Two really good football teams, and they might just see one another again. Right. In the playoffs here in the postseason. Both of them are in. Both undefeated coming into the night. Playing for a region championship. Letting that play clock run down as far as they can. Now start the motion. That's great. Going to be Wiggins with the carry right up the middle again. And Rontarius Wiggins getting on across the midfield stripe. Nice gain on first down. Give him five, maybe six yards, and it'll bring up second down for the Golden Eagles. Of course, next Friday, we're headed back to Death Valley as it'll be the regular season finale. It'll be Chilton County and Alexandria taking on the Valley Cubs. Tune in at 6.30 next Friday night from out in Death Valley and Alexandria. Second and five. Actually, it's... it's 
a short five. They've got to get just shy of the Hoax Bluff 45 yard line. They'll snap this one with somewhere around 310 to go. And it's going to be again Wiggins and lunging forward, and he's going to be just shy of his first. It'll bring up third down and short. Tackle made in there by Will Clemens. <laughs> Mark him at the 43 or 42, so third and two. <laughs> Goat, you think we'll see something wide on this play? No, I think they'll give it straight to Wiggins. Uh, yeah. yeah, he. I think they learned their lesson on the last. <laughs> yeah. And we got some jawing going on out there a little bit. Uh, see some finger pointing there. Need to calm that down. Nothing been decided yet. I don't think anybody needs to talk. 244. Reset it. 244. 244. So they'll have a play clock continue to, to run there. Now they'll reset it to 244 and blow it back in play. And now we're going to have a timeout taken with 244 to go and a third down and two coming up. We're back with more on the Friday Night Network next. Less taxes means more money in your pocket and more money for businesses to grow. I'm Dale Marsh. That's why I authored the largest tax cut Alabama has seen in a decade. Plus, we dramatically reduced state government to save taxpayers another $100 million a year. Conservative Dale Marsh, cutting taxes, reducing government, expanding businesses. I'm Dale Marsh. It's not rocket science. Reduce government, lower taxes, grow jobs. Dale Marsh for Alabama. Third and two coming up here for the Golden Eagles. They take the timeout. Want to make sure they get the play called and have exactly what they want here, Coach. And I think you're just trying to make sure everybody's on the same page. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, I think they got two plays, and I wouldn't be surprised, you know, uh, even if they didn't get the first down, Jacksonville may go for it. Uh, you know, if, it's, if it's close. If, if it's, it's close. close. Maybe if it's close. Right, if it's close. They're going to try to avoid it being close. And uh, Everybody, I think, has got to feel like number four, Wiggins, is going to get the football here. Well, everybody in the stadium, think, I believe Wiggins is going to get the football. I'd be shocked if he didn't get it. Now he's going to move up in a wildcat formation. Now he's going to move back. I think you're going to see a pile to the right. Here comes motion. Barksdale coming right. Wiggins going to run it right back, and he's stuffed in the backfield. Big play by Hoax Bluff. They stuffed that one from the outset. And if you look, they just got finished. Oh. Well, that was an earlier replay, but that was 55, I think, on the stop. Either Austin Elder or Houston Edwards got it there. And uh, Jacksonville will have to kick this one away, and Hoax Bluff, I think, will burn that time out. Well, I think that's the right thing well, to do. They had a penalty flag on the play. And that was declined. <laughs> yeah, I think the right thing to do is uh, make them kick it away. And, uh, yeah. So I had motion on the Golden Eagles, and it'll bring up fourth down. And now Hoax Bluff is going to take that final timeout with 2.37 to go in the football game. Timeout for the Hoax Bluff Eagles. We'll take it as well here on the Friday Night Network. Town & Country already has Alabama's newest Ford store in Pell City. Soon we'll have Alabama's two newest. This will soon be this. Town & Country Ford's construction reduction sale is on. We're making room for construction with price reductions. Find the year's lowest prices on over 800 vehicles. F-150s are up to $14,000 off or zero interest for 72 months. Construction reduction offers good at Bessemer and Pell City. Town & Country Ford. Etowah County Circuit Court Judge David Kimberly has presided over more than 7,000 criminal cases, including three to death and others to spend their lives in prison. Judge Kimberly is committed to protecting Etowah County from dangerous killers. On November 6, re-elect Judge David Kimberly because experience matters. The Marion Stewart lines up in punt formation for the Jacksonville Golden Eagles. Let's see if the Golden Eagles will try to draw, draw Hoax Bluff off sides here. It's fourth and five. Jacksonville, good snap, pressure coming, gets it out of there. Quick kick there by Stewart and a good one, and the fair catch called for and made back inside the 20-yard line. So here we go. Two and a half minutes remaining in the ball game as Braden Hill makes the fair catch, and Oaks Bluff will have one final crack at it. No timeouts. And Jacksonville down a couple of players. Nope, Josh Bell is back on the game, back on the field after 
uh, getting hurt on that last series. So good to see him able to be back out there. But still down, Yasmin Green, who was injured earlier. So first and 10, Hoax Bluff. Ball at their own 17-yard line. Healthy dose of play action and uh, Gullich throwing the football, you would think, here in this situation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you may see a rare occasion of a run. but uh, There it is, Meade. No. Ball is on the ground. Ball is on the ground. Who's got it? Who's got it? Let's see. And Hoax Bluff recovers the football. Lucky. That could have ended it right there. Yeah, absolutely. I think they was trying to run a draw. Second down and 12 now. Here is Gullich going to fire it down. Nobody's out here on his man. He's wide open. That is complete. And out across the 40 and a first down. First down, the pass, a blown coverage, and Tristan Billingsley makes the catch, Coach. As we look at the replay. Just a blown coverage by Jacksonville there. So first and 10, Hoax Bluff, all they need is a field goal. And you also had on that last play right there, you may have had 12 men on the field. I think Jacksonville was substituting and didn't quite get the guy off the field. And they got a personal foul. They're going to call that over here on the sideline. Late hit. Late hit. And uh, that's a mistake that you just can't make at this stage of the game. It was being lobbied for hard down there on the sideline in green. And I didn't think the officials had thrown the flag, but they did. So first to 10 for the Eagles at the 45-yard line. What a football game. Here is Gulledge. Shotgun set. Handed off to Meads. Running over people. He's going to be down as Dingler gets him on the ground. Second down. That'll run some clock right now for Hoaxwell. They'll have to hurry up. They've got time. They're down at the 42-yard line. That's a gain of three. Second down and seven for the Eagles. Gullich looking. Going to go down the far sideline. Got a man down there and pull down from behind. And that's going to be offensive pass interference, I do believe, on Hoax Bluff. As uh, Brayden Hill just grabbed the jersey and pulled the defender down, who was Jules Gray. And believe it or not, Grady, that's an excellent play because if he don't pull him down, that's an interception, and that is the ball game. So, you know, you want to uh, you want to get that penalty and give yourself a chance to Absolutely. Uh, replay that down and get the ball back again. Here's the call. So that'll be a 10-yard walk-off against Hoax Bluff. Takes it back out across midfield to the Eagles 44 yard line. It'll be second down now and 20. Second and 20. No timeouts left for Hoax Bluff. Jacksonville gets so much pressure on the outside. That's why it's hard for Hoax Bluff to get off a pass. Here comes the screen as Jacksonville kind of sees it. It's tipped up and incomplete. And it'll be third down and 20 now for Hoax Bluff. <clears throat> so this one has come down to the bitter end as we suspected it would. Two great football teams uh, really laying it all on the line out here tonight. It's been a fun one to call. Absolutely. You got, uh, you, you, you're looking at two plays uh, to determine their uh, reason title right here. what the Hoax Bluff Eagles will have piled up here. Third and 20 from their own 44-yard line. Gullich dropping back, looking down the middle of the field, tipped and incomplete. Almost intercepted. Kyrie Maynard had it and couldn't come all down with it. So it'll be a one play for it, Coach. One play. Fourth down. And it's kind of tough right here on Hoax Bluff because you got them out the element. You know, they normally used to run in the football. Yeah. Right now they got to throw it. So everybody know they got to throw it. So 
Here it is. Going to heave it down the near sideline. Got players oh. down there. Caught. It is caught. Oh, my goodness. Coming down with it. That is number 13, Jackson Fielding. Penalty flags on the play. Well, you got the offense. You got a defensive holding right there. He grabbed his jersey. And Hoach Bluff is going to have a chance to win this thing as they come up with a play of their season on fourth and 20. Defensive holding against Jacksonville will be the call. And Hoach Bluff, of course, will decline that. Yeah, they have to decline that, and uh, they need to get up to the line of scrimmage. You know, you don't want any time to get off. You want to get it. Fourth and 20. Fielding with the catch yep. for Hoach Bluff. First and 10 Eagles inside the 30th of 28. And they had not blown in play when they snapped the ball. Well, now they have said they did blow in play. That's weird. He yep. blew the whistle. I heard the whistle. And Jacksonville stopped. I think they called it. A <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> nice. Officials are going to total up on that one. I think they are. I don't think he had blown it in play. That's a big two second. That's a big two second uh, gain <laughs> if, if they did. And I, I heard the whistle up here, so I know yeah. there was a whistle. They and may, Jacksonville stopped. They <laughs> and Hoach Bluff stopped. Right. They may go with the inadvertent whistle. Yeah, now they're going to throw a flag. I don't know. And they may get Hoach Bluff for snapping the ball too soon. I've seen some stuff here at the end of this one. <laughs> it's a strange Let's see game. what the call is. Hi. Hi. The first, hey, Mike. The first. Delay again. On the offense. Five yard penalty. First down. So first and 15. So did they, did they start the play clock? I, I never seen it. I, thought I don't they, think they did. So I'm curious as to how to call and delay a game on that, you know, and they never started the play clock. So Hoach Bluff now will come back to the line of scrimmage. First down and 15. Ball back at the 32-yard line. Here is Gulledge. I set. He's going to hand it to Meads. Meads is hit, and he's dropped back at the 35-yard line. So it'll be second down and 17 for the Eagles. I'm going to mark him to the 34. Second down and 16. Now Hoach Bluff's got to get up here and get a play snapped. Here's Gulledge. Blitz coming, gets out of there, fires it down the field, got men down there, incomplete. Bodies everywhere in the end zone. Incomplete, third down and 17 coming up for the Eagles. Look at this play. He just dropped it. I mean, it hit him right in the hands. If you look right there. <laughs> he got it. He got it right there. <laughs> Woo, Coach, I'm getting, I'm getting tired just watching this. I know it, man. I'm getting excited. <laughs> just, just watching the game. Hard beating fast. Third and 16 from the 34-yard line of Jacksonville for Hoax Bluff with 43 seconds to go. Now, you got to keep in mind, you want to get your field goal kick in range. Now, he, had, uh, he got a pretty good kick, has a good leg. Pressure tipped, incomplete. Oh, and a, a pass interference on Jacksonville. You got a flag now. I knew it was coming. You got a flag. And he got there a little too early there. So another big defensive penalty against Jacksonville is going to give Hoax Bluff new life. And they got to get there and get ready to spike the ball. He kind of got there a little bit early if you watch the play there. Before the ball gets there, he sort of make right there, he makes contact. Close call. I will strictly say that. Close right, call. Right. Just a bang, bang play. Yep. So Hoach Bluff will have it, and that will be a 15-yard mark off. And uh, that will leave them just shy of the first down yardage. Clock will start on the snap. You can pick up the first down, stop the clock, then spike it and run a few plays here. <clears throat> I think Jacksonville, if I were Jacksonville, great, I'd load the box up and send the house out of them. Yeah. 
And then Jacksonville has had great success at uh, blitzing and sending the penetration. And you know Meads going to get the ball, so. There it is. Meads has got it. He is hit. And I don't know if he got his first down. They're going to blow it dead. And if they blow it dead, I think he got it. They're going to say, yes, he did. First down and 10 for Hoax Bluff. So you're talking 31 seconds now. So, you know, you... it's all in how you manage it. I don't know if he's going to spike it or not. May just spike it. He did spike the football. So second down coming up for the Eagles. 28 seconds to go. I think they feel like they're in field goal range right now, too, so they want to kind of take care of the football. Well, they, they've missed two field goals tonight. Remember that. Absolutely. Now, <clears throat> one of them count alone. One was a little long, but the other one was just hooked pretty pretty substantially left. So. Uh, absolutely, and it was left hash, too, so I yeah. don't know if they want to put that ball on that left hash again. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Second down and 10, 28 seconds to go. Gullich with an eye set behind him is going to look. He cannot take a sack. He's got to get rid of the football or get out of bounds, and he's going to get out of bounds. And uh, he's going to be back outside at the 21-yard line, so he loses yardage, makes it a little longer field goal. Absolutely. Now, if I was Jacksonville, I'd be jumping up and down. So third down now, and... And you got to remember, any, any play that they complete in the field, you can't spike it because... Yeah. Yes, yeah, be that would be your last down. It's third and 15 now back at the 21-yard line. So, Hoax Bluff will come back and get in the huddle, get the play in. Well, they have no option right now. You know, you can't throw in it. You can take a shot at the end zone. But if I was Jacksonville, I'd pin my ears back again, yeah. Grady. Yeah, come. Don't give them time. Absolutely. Force they, the issue. They got the speed. Here's Gullett standing, firing. Got a man back there. Incomplete, incomplete, had it in his hands for just a second and couldn't pull it in. Threw it down there to Braden Hill. Great coverage and a great right. effort. It's great coverage right there. And if you look, if you look right there, he has it in his hand. He couldn't hold it. I think he poked it out of there. Defensive back makes an excellent the play. Well, actually, I think the ground popped it. It may little. have. It may have. He was out of, called it incomplete right on the spot. So, Hoax Bluff has no choice but to try a field goal. This one's going to be a long one. A 40 to a 37 yard attempt coming up from Whitcomb, and I think we'll see a Jacksonville timeout before this kick. Well, I, I think this one longer than the other one, and yeah. he was short on the other one. So if I was Jacksonville, I would, uh, I'd be careful not to run into the, yeah, to the kick. Yeah, definitely. But. So Golden Eagles will take the timeout. We'll grab a quick one as well. We're back to see how this one ends coming up next here on the Friday Night Network. Serving Calhoun County for over 30 years, Crawford Office Supply offers selection, convenience, and low prices. Choose from a wide variety of office furnishings featured in their huge showroom with savings of 50 to 70% off scratch and dent items. You'll find it all from pens and paper to janitorial supplies at Crawford Office Supply, including on-site printing, all backed up by unmatched personal service and free delivery to local business. Crawford Office Supply, 301 South Layton Avenue in Anniston. Remember, buy local, it matters. We are back. 13 seconds, one play. In essence, we'll decide the region championship here between Hoax Bluff and Jacksonville. And all the pressure on Ethan Whitcomb. He's a senior. The kicker for Hoax Bluff will try a 40, or make that a 37-yard field goal attempt to win the football game and the region title for the Eagles. The Hoax Bluff had to sign up. Tonight is your night. Let's see. Here we go. Gullich will hold it. Snap is high, gets it down. No, never had a chance. Jacksonville will be your Region 6 champions. And heartbreak for the Hoax Bluff Eagles. Oh, so close. First region title for the Eagles, for the Golden Eagles since 1999. Coach, it's one of those that... Uh, you hate to see somebody have to lose. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, both teams played the hard side, and uh, you just hate to see it come down to a situation like that. Uh, you know, I just, he never had a chance, and I, I I felt like if he, you know, field goal over 30 yards, he, he just had trouble with the last one, you know, so I, you know, I think 
Jacksonville in my favorite formation. The right victory there. formation. Take a knee. I hate to do it from the shotgun, yep, but they and that's did. That's Jackson. And Jacksonville, the Golden Eagles, come in to Hoax Bluff, win their eighth consecutive game over the Hoax Bluff Eagles, and especially heartbreaking here at home for Hoax Bluff as they had a field goal to pull out the win at the end and were not able to get it through. And what a football game. Two teams that laid it all on the line and played their hearts out. And uh, the season continues for both of them. Absolutely. You, uh, you have to put this behind you and uh, get ready for the playoffs. Uh, you know, both of you host a playoff game, and I think both of these teams will go very deep in the playoffs. You know. Well, let's grab a timeout. Both teams shaking hands. We'll come back, try to catch up with Jacksonville head coach Clint Smith when we return here on the Friday Night Network. Go, Bob. Professional Apothecary has been the Talladega area's trusted hometown pharmacy for generations. We can meet all your prescription and insurance needs. Plus, you'll find all the basic over-the-counter medications. There's a full line of support hose, and don't forget to check out our Dollar Saver Shelf. When it comes to medical supplies, Professional Apothecary has you covered. You'll find everything from mobility needs to home and portable oxygen, CPAP equipment and supplies, easy lift chairs, and a full line of Dr. Comfort shoes. Thank you for shopping at Professional Apothecary. Just off the square in Talladega. The Calhoun County Commission, made up of J.D. Hess, Tim Hodges, Fred Wilson, Don Hudson, and Lee Patterson, ask you to take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. With our beautiful parks, neighborhoods, recreational facilities, historic sites, and museums, our citizens enjoy a high quality of life and strongly supports the arts. If you're considering expanding or starting a new business, take a look at what Calhoun County has to offer. You'll be glad you did. Well, since we first opened our wholesale lab in 1976, we kept the lab equipment to make our own lenses. The wholesale experience gave us the knowledge to know how to process your prescription to the highest standards, knowing the frame size and shape, which works best for your particular prescription. At Dawson Vision Center, we are still the area's only optical retail store with a full-service lab, which allows us to have your prescription ready in the same day, often in two to three hours. Even if we have to order your frame and lenses, we can still have your glasses ready in days, not weeks. We welcome you back here to Coach Mike Robertson Field in Hoax Bluff, where tonight the Hoax Bluff Eagles fall to the Jacksonville Golden Eagles, 16-14, to 14, our final score tonight. And it is a region championship for the Jacksonville Golden Eagles, their first region title since 1999. And they do it on the road here and stay undefeated on the season. Just an amazing football game, Coach. Absolutely. Uh, you couldn't ask for anything any better. You know, you, you kind of hate, like we said earlier, to see one of, either one of the teams lose. But, you know, Jacksonville fought at the end. And uh, they had their backs against the wall. And they did what they needed to do to win that football game. They did. They came back and uh, made the plays down the stretch. And, of course, you know, it, it comes down. We set a fourth quarter game. Well, it came down to the end of the fourth quarter with a, a field goal attempt. It was a long one and not one that uh, I, I don't know. He would have to get all of it, I think, to make that one. But the snap was a little high, and uh, that throws the timing off a little bit, and and then he gets, just didn't get a good kick off at all. Well, but one thing Jacksonville also does, and uh, even on defense all night, is they put pressure. You know, it, when you got that type of rush coming at you, if, if you don't try to get that kick off, you're probably going to get it blocked because they're so fast off the edges. So, you know, you, my hat's off to them. First time seeing them play, and, uh, you, know, uh, they, they, you know, they did a great job. Yeah, I'm real in, uh, real impressed with, with both of these teams. I think both of them can have great potential to do some damage here in the postseason, Coach. Absolutely. I think uh, these two teams will probably be meeting up in the Northeast region again. You know, I, I, I just don't see anything that would stop them two from meeting. But, you know, this time, uh, Hoax Bluff would have to go to Jacksonville and it would be even tough <laughs> on them because now you're playing in their place, you know, where they play, you know, pretty tough football. Yeah, a meeting there by this uh, region championship team for the Golden Eagles across the way as uh, Danielle Moss is going to be uh, efforting uh, getting Coach Clint Smith here at the end of the football game, and we're kind of waiting on that one. Uh, and, you know, two, both running backs, they didn't disappoint. Meads is uh, as good as advertised, as good as we've heard about for Hoax Bluff. Uh, really a heck of a football player, had a lot of yards on the ground tonight. 
And, of course, Wiggins for Jacksonville really showed his medal there in the fourth quarter, running with the football and being very effective on the ground in that second half, especially for the Golden Eagles. Yeah, they uh, you know, it, it, it's going to be interesting. Uh, you, you, you enjoy what you see, you know, just glad to see the young man, you know, come off the field and that, that they just happen like that. Uh, and I see Danielle has uh, gotten Coach Clint Smith and both he and Ron Terrius Wiggins, uh, the running back we're just talking about for Jacksonville, making their way back over right. to the sideline here. So we're going to get you ready here in just a moment to go down with the uh, victorious coach, one of our favorite people. And I, as I, I said earlier in the game with you, you couldn't have had two, two nicer guys than, than Coach uh, Clint Smith and also, of course, Coach Robertson for Hoax Bluff in this one just class acts all the way around and uh, two class football teams and they both left it all on the field tonight here and uh, in the end it was the Jacksonville Golden Eagles who get it done and come out of here with that first region championship since 1999 and uh, Danielle Moss is uh, standing by and ready on the sidelines with the victors Danielle. Hi, guys. Yes, I'm down here with Coach Smith and Ron Terry. You guys, awesome game. What a game. Undefeated region championships. Tell us, Coach, what does this mean to you? Well, you know, it's a game that you expect. You know, two undefeated teams that, that have uh, played really well all year long. And, you know, just a hard-fought game back and forth. And, uh, you know, hats off to Hoax Bluff and the way they played and the way their kids played. And But, uh, you know, I'm just so proud of our kids, the way they fought through a lot of adversity tonight. And, and just, uh, you know, really believed in themselves and each other's teammates and just uh, got the job done when we needed to tonight. And, you know, just tickled for them, uh, you know, for a region championship and a perfect uh, regular season. Yes. And you guys, you went into the half down. Tell me, what did you talk about in that locker room to get these boys fired well, up? Well, I, th I think the biggest thing is we just had to keep our composure, uh, you know, and uh, just just believe in ourselves and understand that, you know, we've been we've been down before at the half, and uh, you know we've we've always found a way to come back, and you know our kids have a lot of confidence in, in what we do and, and, and in themselves, and uh, you know just keep playing, and that's what we did, and we just kept playing, and offensively, defensively, special teams. You know, just can't say enough. I'm proud of our community. You know, I'm proud for all our community. Our band cheerleaders did a great job tonight. It's just a great atmosphere, and uh, you know, it's just a just a great great feeling. Thank you, Coach. Great job. Thank you. And Ron Terry, tell me, you are a leader on this team. How do you pre prepare for a game like this? Uh, games like this, you know, I just got to get my mind right, make sure my team's under control, they got their head on straight, just so we can come out here and execute and make plays like we did tonight. How do you feel your team attacked the second half? We came out uh, great the second half. Uh, we came out a little bit too aggressive the first half with, like, a little holding penalties and stuff. But the second half, we picked it up and lowered the penalties that we had called on us in the first half. 2,000 yards. You had 103 yards tonight. How do you feel? I mean, as long as we got the win, I feel great. <laughs> great. Thank you. All righty, guys. Back to you. All right, Danielle. Thanks very much. And uh, a very happy Coach Clint Smith as uh, they pull out the region championship win tonight here at Hoax Bluff. We need to get one final break, and we'll come back and get ready to wrap things up. Coming up from here at Hoax Bluff on the Friday Night Network. Griffin Laser Engraving in Lincoln is your authorized local dealer for personalized Yeti products. Get your Yeti customized for your team, a business, or a special event, your color, graphics, even folks at Griffin Laser Engraving, we make it the way you want it. Order just one or hundreds and you'll find the full line of Yeti coolers and accessories on hand, even the hard to find items. Nationally recognized, but right here at home in Lincoln for quality awards, trophies, powder coating and personalized Yeti items, Griffin Laser Engraving. Step into the offices of J. Britt Middlebrook CPA, where you'll find professional one-on-one -on -one service for business and individual clients. In this ever-changing tax and economic climate, you can count on receiving the expert advice you need. J. Britt Middlebrook works hard to provide every client what they need to meet all deadlines. Tax season will be here soon. For all your accounting service needs, call or stop by at 1913 Berry Street in Oxford. That's J. Britt Middlebrook, CPA. In a world that's ever-changing, you have to be sure that your choices are the right choices. At Central Alabama Community College, you'll know you made the best choice. We understand that you need the best educational opportunities. Whether choosing a technical degree program, taking courses to transfer to a four-year college or university, or being a part of our national championship winning traditions, Central Alabama will provide you with courses and degree programs in tune with today's workplace. 
Get a sharper focus on your life by choosing one of our three convenient locations. Alex City, Childersburg, and Talladega. Central Alabama Community College. Central to you. Central to your success. Welcome back here to Coach Mike Robertson Field in Hoax Bluff where the Jacksonville Golden Eagles come in tonight and they win it 16 to 14 to take the Region 6 title here and their first since 1999. So a very happy Coach Clint Smith and the entire team. So the Golden Eagles move on, finish the regular season undefeated. Hoax Bluff will finish second in the region and uh, suffer their first loss on the season. And both teams will be very, very strong in the postseason coming up here in just a couple of weeks. I want to remind you, join us for our... Tuesday night high school football coaches show coming up this week, and uh, that'll be on Tuesday night live at Struts. And, of course, we'll uh, be interviewing our player of the week, which will be announced coming up on Monday. Of course, there's a shot of last week's Col uh, Colton East from Pleasant Valley, who was our player of the week. Who will it be this week? Well, just make sure you uh, check in and uh, look online at fnnnetwork.com on Monday, also on the FNN Facebook page. So then we've got Player of the Week, we've got the Coaches Show on Tuesday, and then, of course, next Friday night, our regular season finale, as we'll be out at Death Valley for Chilton County at Alexandria coming up at 6.30 next Friday night. Coach Bullock, that's going to have a that's gonna have a heck of a time living up to this one. Absolutely. Uh, you know, they're going to have to put in some work if they're going to live up to this one, because <laughs> this, uh, I tell you, this one had chills in my body. Uh, when we got down toward the end, I started having flashbacks. It was an exciting one. Great game tonight here. Jacksonville wins at 16-14 to 14 for our entire crew. I'm Grady Sapp. Good night, everyone, from here in Hope's Bluff.